Release that witch. By E.R. Mew. Synopsis. Cheng Yan transmigrated only to end up in a medieval Europe-like world, becoming Roland, a royal prince. But this world doesn't seem to be the same as his former world, despite some similarities. Witches are real and they actually can use magic? Follow Roland's battle for the throne against his siblings. Will he be able to win, even though the king already declared him to be a hopeless case and with the worst starting situation? With his knowledge of modern technologies and the help of the witches, who are known as devil's servants and are hunted by the the holy church, he might have a fighting chance. Now, let his journey begin. World Map First Saga, Stepping into a New World Chapter 1, From Today Onwards, I'm a Royal Prince Cheng Yan could sense that someone was calling him. Your Highness, please wake up. He turned his head away, but the sounds he'd heard didn't disappear, they actually proceeded to get even louder instead. Then, he felt someone gently tug on his sleeve. Your Highness, my Royal Prince. Cheng Yan's eyes snapped open. His familiar surroundings had disappeared, his work desk was gone, and the familiar walls filled with post-its were gone. They'd all been replaced by a strange landscape. A round public square that was enclosed by small brick houses, and the gallows that were erected in the center of the square now dominated his field of view. He himself sat at a table across the square from the gallows. There wasn't a soft rotating office chair under his butt, but a cold hard iron chair instead. There was also a group of people sitting with him and watching him intently. Several of them were dressed as medieval lords and ladies from those western flicks, and were trying to suppress their giggles. What the hell? Wasn't I just rushing to finish my mechanical blueprints before the deadline? Cheng Yan was at a loss as he thought to himself. For three consecutive days, he had been working overtime. Thus, he was both mentally and physically at his limit. He could only vaguely remember that his heartbeat had become unsteady, and that he just wanted to lie down on his desk and take a break. Your Highness, please declare your ruling. The speaker was the one that had secretly tugged on his sleeve. His face was old, seemingly in his 50s or 60s, and he wore a white robe. At first glance, he looked a bit like Gandalf, from the Lord of the Rings. Am I dreaming? Cheng Yan thought as he licked his dry lips, ruling? What ruling? As he quickly glanced around, his confusion was swept away. The people surrounding him were all looking in the direction of the center of the square, at the gallows. Many townspeople were also in the plaza and were waving their fists while they shouted and even threw an occasional stone towards the gallows and the figure on it. Cheng Yin had only ever seen such an ancient instrument of death in movies. The gallows consisted of two pillars extending upwards about four meters from a raised base, with a crossbeam extending between the two pillars with a thick yellow hemp rope around the middle of the crossbeam. One end of the rope was tied to the gallows, and the other end was tied into a noose around a prisoner's neck. In this strange dream Cheng Yan thought he was in, he found that he was able to see everything clearly. Usually, he'd even need to wear his glasses to see the words on a computer screen, but now Chen Yang could see every detail of the gallows, which were 50 meters away, without his glasses. The prisoner atop the gallows had their head completely covered with a hood and had their hands tied behind their back. They wore dirty gray clothes that were little more than rags draped over a frame so thin, it seemed you could easily wrap your hand around their exposed ankle. Cheng Yan judged the prisoner to be female by her faintly bulging chest, and looked on as she stood there shivering in the chilly wind, but still trying to stand up straight to face her fate on her feet. All right then, Cheng Yan thought to himself, what crime did this woman commit that caused so many people to be so outraged, and to wait for her to be hanged with such rage and hostility? Cheng Yan's memories appeared, almost as if they'd suddenly been turned on and he realized the cause of the situation, and the answer to his question, at almost the same time. She was a witch. She was considered to have fallen to the temptation of the devil and was known as an incarnation of evil. Your Highness. The Gandalf lookalike cautiously urged. Cheng Yan glanced at the old man. Well, Cheng Yan's new memories told him, the old man wasn't called Gandalf, his real name was Barav, and he was an assistant minister of finance dispatched by the Roland's father to assist in the governing of the territory. Cheng Yan's identity was that of the fourth prince of the kingdom of Grey Castle, Roland, and he had been sent here to govern this region. The residents of this border town had caught and seized the witch, immediately turning her over to the local guards to question. Questioning? No, she was immediately sent to be sentenced with no opportunity to defend herself. The execution of suspected witches was usually overseen by the local lords or bishops, 
but since he'd assumed control of this territory, issuing such orders had become his obligation. Cheng Yan's memory answered his questions one by one, it was unnecessary to filter and read through them, it was as if they had always been his own experiences. He was momentarily confused, there was absolutely no way a dream could have so many details. Then, Cheng Yan thought, was it possible that this wasn't a dream? I've really traveled through time, to the dark ages of medieval Europe, and have become Roland? I've gone from a pitiful mechanical engineer with his nose down in his papers to a grand fourth prince overnight? This piece of territory that looked so barren and backward was in the Kingdom of Grey Castle, a name that he had never seen in his history books. Well, then how do I want to handle this? Cheng Yin thought to himself. Cheng Yan decided he would try and examine how an unscientific thing like being transported through time and space had happened later, his immediate concern was with how to stop the farce taking place in front of him. Assigning the blame for the disasters and misfortune that befell them onto these witches was the act of ignorant barbarians. He really couldn't bring himself to do anything as stupid as hanging another person just to satisfy the watching masses. He grabbed the formal written orders held by Barav and tossed them to the ground and slowly said, I'm feeling tired, we will give our judgment another day. Court dismissed, now disperse people. Cheng Yin knew he couldn't risk being reckless, so he rummaged carefully through his memories and reflected the former prince's behavior. He had to continue on with the former prince's dandyism and roguish behavior. That's right, the fourth prince himself was messed up, had a nasty character, and did whatever he wanted with no thoughts to the consequences of his actions. Anyways, Cheng Yin mused. Could they really expect an uncontrollable 20-something-year-old to have good behavior? The members of the nobility who sat with him maintained their equanimity at his unexpected statement, but a tall man wearing a suit of armor stood up and argued, Your Highness, this isn't a joke. All known witches should be put to death immediately upon being identified, or other witches might be tempted to try and save her. Do you want to force the church to get involved when they hear that we have allowed a witch to live? We have no choice in this matter. Carter, this dashing man, was actually his knight commander. Cheng Yan frowned and said, Why, are you scared? His voice was full of blatant mockery and wasn't a complete act. A man with an arm thicker than the waist of the so-called witch actually feared a prison raid from women. Were witches really the devil's messengers? Wouldn't it be better to catch more witches than to settle for only one? Seeing him no longer utter a word, Cheng Yan waved his hand to call his personal guards and left. Carter hesitated a moment before going down and catching up with the troops walking by the fourth prince's side. The other nobles got up and paid their respects to the prince, but Cheng Yan could see undisguised contempt from the eyes of those in the crowd. Back in the keep, the castle was located to the south of the border town. He dismissed the anxious minister Barav outside the door to his chambers, allowing him to finally breathe a sigh of relief now that he was alone. As a person who'd spent 90% of his time dealing with people through a computer, facing everyone like he just had already surpassed his comfort zone. Cheng Yan found the location of his bedroom from his new memories, took a seat on his bed, and got a moment of real rest as he tried to suppress his violently beating heart. At the moment, the most important matter was to clarify the situation. Why was the prince, who couldn't stay in Wimbledon City, the capital of the kingdom, sent to this barren land? The unexpected answer he came up with left him stupefied. Roland Wimbledon was actually sent here to fight for the right to succeed the king. Everything had originated from King Wimbledon III of Grey Castle's wonderful proclamation to his children saying, you want to inherit the kingdom? The firstborn prince doesn't necessarily have the right to become king, only the person who proves themselves as the most capable of governing can inherit the country. He placed various territories under the rule of his five children and after five years he'd decide who would become his successor based on the level of skill they displayed in governing their respective territories. While turning the decision of who should inherit the throne into a meritocracy and providing equal opportunity regardless of gender might sound like very enlightened concepts, the real problem was with the actual implementation of said ideas. Would there be any guarantee that all five of them received the same starting conditions? This wasn't like playing a real-time strategy game. To his knowledge, the second son had been given a better territory than this border town. Actually when he thought about it, it seemed that among the five regions they'd been given, none of the others were worse than his frontier town. His starting point was simply inferior. Also, Cheng Yan wondered, how was one to assess the level of governance? By the population? Military power? Economic standing? 
Wimbledon 3 hadn't mentioned any standard, nor did he put the slightest restrictions on their methods of competition. In case someone secretly assassinated the other candidates, what would he do? Would the Queen stand by and watch her children kill each other? Wait. He carefully recalled the next memory. All right, another piece of bad news, the Queen had died five years ago. Cheng Yan sighed. Obviously, this was a barbaric and dark feudal era he had found himself in. Just the way they seemed to wantonly kill witches was enough to give him a few hints. Also, Cheng Yan thought, why would he want to become king? With no internet and none of the comforts of modern civilization, he'd have to live the same life as the native people. Burning witches for fun, living in a city where everyone dumped their excrement wherever they wished, and finally dying from the Black Death. Cheng Yan being a prince could already be considered a very high starting point. Even if he didn't become king he was still of royal blood and had already been knighted. As long as he managed to stay alive he would be considered as one of the lords of the realm. Cheng Yan suppressed his wandering thoughts and went to his bedroom mirror. The man looking back at him in the mirror had light grey hair, which was the royal family's most distinctive feature. His face was slightly pale and with his regular facial features, he seemed to be completely without personality traits. He appeared to be lacking in physical exercise and as for wine and woman, he recalled indulging in both with some regularity. He had had several lovers in the king's city, but all had been willing participants, he hadn't forced anyone. As for the cause of his own crossing over, Cheng Yan guessed that thanks to the company's inhuman urging to progress forward, his boss had arranged for him to work overtime, which in turn actually led to the tragedy that was his sudden death. The victims of cases like these were usually coders, mechanical engineers, and programmers. In the end, no matter what, at least I got the equivalent of an extra life. I really shouldn't complain too much, in the coming days, I might be able to slowly improve this life, but my first task is to play a convincing fourth prince, so that other people don't find something amiss with my behavior and think I'm possessed by the devil, leading to my being burned at the stake," Cheng Yan thought to himself. So, in order to live well, Cheng Yan took a deep breath, looked in the mirror, and whispered, From now on, I'm Roland. Chapter 2, The Witch Named Anna, Part I. For a period of time Roland locked himself in his room as he carefully reviewed the memories of this new world, such that dinner had to be sent directly to him by his servants. Roland suppressed his fear of the unfamiliar environment he found himself in under his strong will to live. He was very clear that if he wanted to blend in and avoid being suspected by the people around him he needed to get more information as soon as possible. Roland had to say that the fourth prince had, apart from fooling around with some other sons of the nobility, no additional things in his brain. Over and over again, Roland was unable to remember any valuable information such as knowledge of the aristocracy, the political situation in his own country, or the diplomatic situation with his neighbors. As for basic common sense, such as city names, or the years of significant events, they were completely different than the history of Europe he knew. It seemed that based on his memories, the old Roland had had absolutely no chance of obtaining the throne. Perhaps the King of Grey Castle was aware of this, and because of that, the prince had been thrown into this hellish place, even if he made a mess of things in this border town, it wouldn't result in much damage to the kingdom. The next memories Roland looked at were of his brothers and sisters, and what he found left him unsure whether he should laugh or cry. Roland's eldest brother, the first prince, had an above-average military power. His second brother was scheming and horridly treacherous, his third sister was afraid of death, and his younger sister was brilliant. This was the entirety of the former fourth prince's impressions of his siblings. Roland felt a little awkward, after more than a decade of living with them the old Roland's knowledge had been summed up in a few words. What forces they'd developed, who their competent subordinates were, what they were experts at, what their plans were and so on, he knew nothing at all. It was only three months ago that the fourth prince had come to this frontier town, but the nobility had already stopped hiding their contempt for him. It was obvious that the fourth prince wasn't cut out to be a leader. Fortunately, when the king had left Roland this territory, he had sent along two of his more capable subordinates to provide assistance so the townspeople wouldn't suffer under the old Roland's inept rule. After Roland woke up the next morning one of his maids, Tyre, repeatedly mentioned that the assistant minister wanted to see him. When it seemed that he could put it off no longer Roland acted according to his past memories and reached out to cup the maid's ass before sending her to fetch Barav, who had been waiting in the drawing room. Seeing the flushing tire exit the room, Roland suddenly realized that, 
since he had reincarnated, shouldn't he have a system or something like that? At least in many tales that was the standard formula, but the arrival of a system never happened. Sure enough, what Roland had read in those novels was all fiction. In the drawing room, Varav was already restless from waiting. The moment Roland appeared he asked, Your Highness, why didn't you order the execution yesterday? One day earlier, one day later, what's the difference? Roland said as he clapped his hands, letting the attendants know to bring his breakfast in, sit down, Varav. The impressions he had from the old Roland's memories, and also based on his own opinion, was that the Knight Commander liked to confront problems with the Fourth Prince directly face to face, even in the presence of others, while the Assistant Minister was more circumspect and liked to discuss issues in private. In any case, the loyalty of the two was likely to be to the King. A day later may lead to other witches appearing, my Royal Prince? This isn't the same as before with your previous escapades, not during this time of chaos. Barav cautioned. How can you even say that? Roland asked while frowning. I thought you were capable of distinguishing the differences between superstition and fact. Barav looked bewildered, what superstitions? That a witch is evil and the devil's messenger, Roland seemed to not mind as he patiently answered the question. Isn't that what the church teaches us? They won't intervene here, I think it's actually the opposite. Their propaganda states that witches are evil, and while we've chosen not to actively aid their witch hunt, all the people in this territory believe in these shameless superstitions spread by the church. Barav was shocked, could, could a witch really be, indeed evil? Roland asked, like what? The assistant minister was silent for a moment, trying to decide if the prince was deliberately making fun of him, your highness, this problem can be discussed later. I know you don't like the church, but this pursuit of conflict is counterproductive. Roland curled his lips. It seemed that reversing this superstition about witches wasn't something that he could do overnight, but for now he decided to put it out of his mind. When Roland's breakfast of toast, fried eggs and a carafe of milk arrived he made up two plates, one of which he served to the assistant minister. You haven't eaten until now, right? Asked Roland before he started eating. The maid had told him that Barav had arrived outside his chambers at dawn, and had directly requested to see him, so he shouldn't have had time to eat. While he'd decided to imitate the former prince's way of life, he'd also decided to begin to change the way people perceived him a bit at a time. The assistant minister was a good first target for his plan. Roland thought to himself, if you can make your men feel valued, then they'll be more motivated to work for you. Taking the initiative had always been the most efficient way to win, hadn't it? Barav took the cup of milk Roland handed him but didn't drink as he anxiously said, Your Highness, we still have a problem. The guards reported that three days ago, a suspected witch camp was found in the western forest. Because they left in a hurry and didn't clean up all of their traces, a guard found this in the camp. He took out a coin from his pocket and put it in front of Roland. This wasn't the common currency of the kingdom, at least according to the memories of the old Roland, he hadn't seen such a coin. It wasn't even like theirs, it wasn't even made of metal. Feeling it in his his hands, he was surprised to find that the coin was warm, and the assistant minister definitely wasn't the source of this sweltering heat of at least 40 degrees Celsius, which reminded him of the moment when one took a bath. What is this? Roland asked. I thought it was just some foul trinket that a witch made, but it's actually more serious than that? Barav had to pause to wipe his forehead, the printed pattern is known as the Devil's Eye of the Sacred Mountain, which is the emblem of the Witch Cooperation Association. Roland rubbed the coin's uneven surface, he guessed that it was probably fired ceramic. Indeed, he saw that the center of the coin depicted a mountain-shaped pattern of three triangles juxtaposed with one eye in the center triangle. The pattern's contour lines were very rough, he judged that it should have been polished by hand. Roland recalled the two terms Devil's Eye of the Sacred Mountain and the Witch Cooperation Association, but wasn't able to discover any details. It seemed that the fourth prince have had no interest in occultism. Roland didn't expect that Barav knew more, but he continued, Your Highness, you haven't seen real witches before, so it's understandable if you think their abilities are exaggerated. Indeed, they can be injured, they'll even bleed and aren't any harder to kill than the rest of us, but that's only for a witch who can't resist. When they receive the devil's power it can shorten the lifespan of a witch, but it can also give them terrible power. Ordinary people just can't match them. Once a witch grows to adulthood, even an army will have to pay a high price to kill her. Their desires are almost impossible to suppress, 
ultimately causing them to degenerate into the devil's minions the church therefore declared a holy inquisition if a woman is found to have even a chance to be a witch they're to be immediately seized and executed the king has also approved of this decree and in fact these measures have been highly effective and the incidents where witches have wreaked havoc have already greatly declined in comparison to a hundred years ago the sacred mountain or to say the doorway to hell is only a rumor illustrated in an ancient book from that era Roland, while gnawing on his bread, sneered again and again as he heard this. Although the histories of this world and the world he knew were very different, their historical trajectories were surprisingly similar. No matter if it was the church in this world or the church he knew from, he thought that religion itself was the devil's minion, the real source of evil. You don't think sentencing someone to death only because they are different isn't evil? Using God's name to kill someone was all kinds of wrong. Unaware of Roland's thoughts, Barav continued with his speech, recorded in ancient books is that witches can only find real peace at the sacred mountain. They wouldn't have to suffer uncontrollable desires because their magic would have no side effects. There's no doubt that the so-called sacred mountain was certainly the birthplace of evil, an entrance to hell on earth. I think that only hell won't punish those who've fallen for the devil's temptations. The League of Allied Witches, who are they? What's their relationship with the sacred mountain? Roland asked. Barav explained with a sour face, in the past, everything was good because the witches would run away before the Inquisition arrived and were living in seclusion. But in recent years, the League of Allied Witches appeared and made a difference. They want to gather all of the witches and find the sacred mountain. For this purpose, the Witch Cooperation Association will even take the initiative of luring others into becoming a witch. In the last year, many babies disappeared in the port of clear water, and the rumor was that it was their doing. Chapter 3, The Witch Named Enna, Part 2. Roland swallowed the last piece of fried egg from his breakfast, took a napkin and wiped his mouth before saying, so you are saying that you are worried that the Witch Cooperation Association will hear the news that the witch did not die and hence will try to rescue her. It is as your highness has said, Barav stomped angrily as he exclaimed, if the prisoner had died it would be bad enough, but now she is still alive? If those witches are even crazy enough to steal babies on the chance they might become future comrades, how far do you think they'd go for someone who has already become a minion of the devil? With how recklessly they behave, attempting a rescue wouldn't be surprising. Roland was confused, he had always felt that there was something amiss about this situation. Why were the assistant minister and the knight commander so scared of witches? The woman who should have been hanged was a witch, right? The woman who was so thin it was as if she would fall down when the wind blew? If she really had such a terrible power, why would she need to stand there and wait for death? No, she would not. According to the preaching of the church, she was the devil incarnate, to be executed without trial. Even the army would need to pay a hefty price when going against a witch. However, this devil was caught by the normal townspeople of this border town, was tortured, even fitted with a noose, but until now they had not seen a trace of that supposed terrible power. How did she get caught? Roland queried. I heard that when the North Mine collapsed, in order to escape, she exposed her identity as a witch and was then captured by angry villagers. Barav answered. Roland thought as he listened to Barav, why do I have the impression that this happened the day before my reincarnation? How did she expose herself? The prince asked aloud. I, well, I am not sure, the assistant minister shook his head and said, the situation was very confusing, it could be that someone saw her using witchcraft. Roland frowned as he asked, you did not thoroughly investigate the situation. Your Highness, to resume mining was the priority, the assistant minister protested, the revenue from that iron mine accounts for half of the production of this town, and the guards confirmed that someone at the scene was killed by witchcraft. What kind of witchcraft? Roland asked, interested. The head and a large part of the body were spread out on the ground as if they were melted. The corpse looked like a used-up candle, the minister said with a look of disgust. Your Highness, be glad you didn't see such a scene. Roland started playing with a silver fork thoughtfully. Historically, most of the victims of the witch hunts were innocent, tools for the church to maintain control over the populace or possibilities for ignorant townspeople to vent their anger. Sure, a small part of the accused caused their own downfall. The kind of people dressed that oddly while mixing together all sorts of strange material, claiming that they could predict the future and knew the conclusion of life and death. The truth was those people did figure out some tricks, such as the use of chemical reactions, 
but then they used that to claim that they had gained the power of the gods. To modernize, these were just some simple chemistry tricks, but in medieval times, those could easily be misrepresented as incredible phenomenon. As for melting people, the first thing Roland thought of was an acid solution. But it would be a hassle to prepare those kinds of things, and you would also need to thoroughly soak the body with it, but it wouldn't look like a burned down candle, as for other methods they were out of the question. Then how did she do it? If she relied on alchemy, and that was rare, maybe. Roland thought until there and then said in a determined tone, take me to see her. The assistant minister was shocked for a moment before spluttering, sir, you want to see the witch? Barav stood up in panic, knocked over the cup with the milk which he hadn't drunk. Yes, this is a command. Roland said looked back and smiled at the assistant minister. He was now really thankful for the fourth prince's unreasonable style. Roland went over to the door but suddenly paused, asking, right, I have to ask, why would we use the gallows? What? Barav said. Roland reiterated his question, why would she be hanged? Shouldn't witches be burned at the stake? Barav face seemed puzzled as he asked, isn't it true? But she is not afraid of fire. The dungeon was small. This barren land could not afford to have too many prisoners. Most criminals would face trial after a few days and either be released or killed. In addition to Barav, the prince was entering the dungeon with the knight commander, the prison warden, and two guards. The dungeon had a total of four levels and the walls were built out of hard granite blocks. It was Roland's first time being at this kind of place and he noted the deeper he got, the narrower the hallway became that the number of cells was also reduced. He thought they probably dug a pit in the form of an inverted cone first, and then build layer after layer out of stone. This rough project would of course not have a good drainage system. The ground was wet and the muddy sewage was flowing down the stairs, down to the last floor. Obviously, the witch was at the bottom of the dungeon. Each layer they went down, the stench in the air became thicker. Your Highness, you are risking too much by doing this, even though she is sealed with God's locket of retribution, it isn't safe. It was Carter who had spoken. As soon as he knew that the prince was planning on visiting the witch, he immediately went after the prince, advising him all along the road to stop going over. But it was all for naught, even the repeating the direct command of the king not to engage in any dangerous situations had no effect. Obviously, he wasn't only a pretty face, he was also a chatterbox. After being subjected to this for some time, Roland only wished that someone would sew his mouth up. You must look evil in the eye before you face it on the battlefield and stand toe to toe, I thought you knew that he said. In addition to fighting the evil with courage, it is also important to assess one's capabilities and act accordingly, reckless behavior is not considered courageous. Carter rebutted. You mean to say that if you ran into an enemy weaker than you, you hold justice, but if he is stronger than you, you will turn a blind eye. Roland challenged. No, your highness, I mean, Carter stammered. Before you were already afraid of a witch raid, and now you are even afraid to see a little girl, my knight commander is indeed fearsome. Although the knight was a good speaker, he didn't excel at debate, encountering a smooth talker like Roland he completely lost. Taking advantage of this effort, the group reached the bottom of the dungeon. This floor was many times smaller than the one above, with a total of only two cells. The warden lit the torches on the walls and as the darkness faded, Roland saw the hunched over witch in a corner of her cell. It was already late autumn and the temperature in the dungeon was low enough to make people see white fog when they took a breath. He wore a fur coat with silk lining inside, so did not feel cold, but the girl only wore coarse linen that couldn't even fully cover her body with her arms and feet sticking out and turning blue. The suddenly lit up torches made her cringe away with her eyes closed. But soon, she was able to open her eyes and look straight at them. It was a pair of pale blue eyes, like a calm lake before the onset of heavy rains. There was no fear on the witch's face and you couldn't see any anger or hatred. Roland saw a vision, it was as if what he saw in front of him was not a weak little girl. Instead, it appeared as if he was in front of a raging flame. He suddenly felt that the torch light from the walls was a little dim. The girl tried to stand up while leaning against the wall, in slow motion as if afraid to fall. But in the end, she ultimately stood up and hobbled her way out of the corner, allowing the light to cover her. Already such a simple movement, yet it made his men suck in several breaths of cold air as they even retreated two steps back, only the knight commander could resist and stood in front of Roland. What is your name? Roland asked the witch and patted the knight on the shoulder, indicating that he did not need to be so nervous. Anna, 
She replied. Chapter 4, Flame. In the end, what happened when the mine collapsed? Can you repeat it for me step by step? Roland asked. Anna nodded and began to describe it. Roland was a bit surprised, he expected her to stay silent or to angrily curse at him, but instead she just responded with, ask whatever you want, and obediently told her tale. It wasn't a complicated story, but a sad one nonetheless. Anna's father was a miner and when the mine collapsed, he was at work. Immediately after they got the news of the collapse, Anna and the other miners' families went over to help rescue their loved ones. The North Mine was previously rumored to be an underground monster lair with many forks in the road, extending in all directions. Since the rescuers were under no unified command, the volunteers separated after arriving at the mine entry so that when Anna found her father, only her neighbors, Susan and Ansgar were by her side. Anna had discovered that her father's leg was crushed under a full ore cart and he couldn't move, but at his side was another miner patting him down, searching for her father's money. As the looter saw them arrive, he took a pick and rushed at Ansgar and knocked him to the ground, but just at the moment when he was about to strike her, Anna killed him first. Anna's neighbors vowed that they would never say anything about this matter, and with their help Anna rescued her father. But before dawn, the next day, Anna's father went out on his crutches and reported to the patrolling guards that his daughter was a witch. Why? Roland, when he had heard up until this point, could not help but ask. Barav sighed and answered, probably so he could receive the gold reward. The discovery and reporting of a witch, can get you 25 gold royals. For a man with a crippled leg, these 25 gold royals are equivalent to what he could earn for half a lifetime of work. After a moment of silence, Roland asked, your opponent was a strong and grown-up man, how were you able to kill him? At this Anna laughed, and the flames of the torches shook, just like high waves on a previously calm lake's surface. It was exactly like what you think, I used the power of the devil. Anna said, shut up, vile sorceress, shouted the warden, but everyone could hear his voice trembling. Is that true? I want to see it the fourth prince was unmoved by their antics as he calmly said. Your highness, this is no laughing matter. The knight commander interjected as he furrowed his brows. Roland stepped out from behind the protection of his knight, step by step moving closer towards the cell as he said, everyone who is too afraid of her can leave, I did not ask you to stay here. Don't panic, she has a god's locket of retribution around her neck, shouted Barav loudly to comfort everyone, but likely also to reassure himself, no matter how powerful the devil is, he cannot break god's blessing. Standing in front of the prison bars, Roland and Anna were at arm's length and he could clearly see her dusty and bruised cheek. Her soft facial features showed that she still was a minor, but her expression did not have any traces of childishness. More than that, even anger was hard to find. It was the kind of disharmonious thing Roland had only had seen on TV. It was the face of a wandering orphan who had suffered from poverty, hunger, cold, etc., but it was not exactly the same, normally in front of the camera the lost children always stood with a bent and beaten down body, their head down, but Anna did not. From the beginning until now, she had still tried to stand straight with her gaze slightly raised, calmly looking into the prince's eyes. She did not fear death, Roland realized. Instead, she was waiting for death. Is this the first time you have seen a witch, my lord? Your curiosity might get you killed. Anna said. If it was really the power of the devil, you would absolutely not be in this current situation, Roland responded, if that were true, it is not I who should fear death, but your father. The fires in the prison suddenly became dark, and this was definitely not an illusion, what seemed to be like suppressed flames were soon left with only tight flame clusters. Behind himself, Roland could hear the sound of rapid breathing and prayer, as well as the muffled sound of panicked people accidentally falling down. Roland's heartbeat accelerated and he felt himself at an unusual turning point. On one side was the world with common sense, which was in accordance with the laws and constants that he knew, not one thread loose, and on the other side was an incredible new world, which was full of mystery and the unknown. And right now he was standing in front of this world. Hung on her neck is actually the god's locket of retribution? What a simple and crude locket, Roland thought. A red iron chain with a sparkling and translucent pendant, if the witch did not have both her hands handcuffed behind her back, couldn't she use a quick pull to destroy this kind of thing? Roland glanced at the crowd behind him, who were still mouthing prayers in panic. He quickly reached into the cell, grabbed the pendant, 
and with a little tug the necklace's chain snapped and then crashed down broken, the move startled even Anna. Come on, Roland whispered. Are you in the end, a liar, some type of alchemist, or are you a real witch? If you now take out bottles and jars and start compounding acids, I will be disappointed, Roland thought. Roland then heard a crackling sound, which was the noise of the thermal expansion of water vapor. Thanks to a dramatic rise in temperature, the water on the ground beneath them had changed to steam. Roland saw a blazing flame rising directly from Anna's foot, and then the ground where she stood was burning up. The torches behind them exploded simultaneously, as if they received pure oxygen, in a burst of brilliant light. For a short time, the whole cell was as if it was in daylight, and all this was accompanied by the onlookers' terrified screams. When the witch moved forward, the flames surrounding her moved with her. As she came to the edge of her cell, the dozens of iron bars that made up the wall became pillars of fire. Roland was forced to retreat, the heated air was biting his skin, making him feel pain. In just a few breaths of time, he had escaped from a late autumn summer, no, this was a different kind of heat, this was solely generated by this high temperature flame and not a full ambient summer heat. One side of his body was facing the flame's heat, and on the opposite side Roland felt a chill. He could even feel cold sweat trickling down his back. She really does not fear fire, Roland thought. Roland remembered the words of the assistant minister. Only now could he really understand the meaning of that sentence. She is the flame herself, and how could someone fear oneself? Soon, the iron bars turned from crimson to a light yellow, and they began to melt. This meant that they have been heated to more than 1500 degrees Celsius, and achieving this in a condition without any insulating measures, which was far beyond the imagination of Roland. Like others, he had stepped away from the cell, firmly attaching himself to the wall farthest away from the cell. If he had not done this, the heat produced, enough to melt the iron bars, was enough to kill him even without direct contact, but it was also enough for the clothes to combust, such as Anna's, her prisoner's smock had burnt to ashes and her body was now surrounded by a raging fire. Roland didn't know how long it lasted, but in the end, the flame completely faded. The torches were quietly burning on the section of the wall next to them, it seemed like nothing had ever happened. But Anna's burned clothes, the hot air, and the prison bars which looked like as if it was burned by the devil's minions, all this, told everyone that this wasn't an illusion. In addition to Roland, only the night commander was still standing. The others had collapsed to the ground, the warden was so scared that his pants smelled of urine. Anna was now standing naked outside the cell, her arm shackles were gone. She did not block the view at her naked body, her hands were hanging naturally at her side and her eyes which were blue like the sea were restored to the tranquility from before. Now I have satisfied your curiosity, sir, she said, will you kill me now? No, Roland stepped forward and wrapped his coat around her and said with a tone as mild as possible, Miss Anna, I want to hire you. Chapter 5, Reasons. Second Law of Thermodynamics, Heat can never pass from a colder to a warmer body without some other changes, or it is impossible to convert heat from a single source into useful work without causing other effects, in an irreversible or spontaneous change from one equilibrium state to another the entropy always increases. Roland carefully copied this law onto paper, writing in the language of this world. At first glance, the text resembled a moving earthworm. He really did not understand how the locals could learn so many varied and complicated characters. If you asked him which of the numerous physical laws would be the one to cause most people to feel depressed, Roland would choose the second law of thermodynamics. It tells everyone that this world's heat will always pass from high to low, replacing the disorder into order, increasing the entropy. Eventually, everything will end in nothingness and the universe will become deathly silent and this world had broken away from the ever-increasing entropy problem. It could make magic out of nothing, which was much more impressive than the theorized invention of a perpetual motion machine. The forces of evil? Roland scoffed and thought to himself that the people of this world did not understand the true nature of this power, and it was so enormous that it could even change the entire universe. Of course, for a beginning, he could only start to change this small border town. Roland hummed a tune, tore up the paper he had written and threw it into the fireplace where it was reduced to ashes, feeling the pleasure of breaking out of a cage. The assistant minister looked askance at the fourth prince's unexplainable actions, but fortunately for Roland the old fourth prince had always acted in this manner. 
In the end, Varav decided that the prince's strange whimsy would pass with no need for him to bother about it, and he could see that the prince was enjoying himself. The killing has been completed, the witch was hanged at noon, reported Varav to Roland. Good, did anyone see it? Roland spoke while writing, no matter, all of the condemned wear hoods. In order to prevent the Holy Church and the Witch Cooperation Association from knocking at his door, Roland had ordered the dungeon warden to find a person with a similar build within the death row criminals and let them replace Anna on the gallows. In addition to the knight commander and assistant minister, everyone who was with him in the dungeon was given hush money consisting of 20 gold royals. This was an enormous windfall for them. Varav even proposed killing all of the witnesses, or they would never keep their silence forever, but Roland rejected this. He knew he could not prevent this secret from spreading, but this didn't matter because he actually wanted someone to spread the word, just not now. He would fall out with the church sooner or later anyway, those idiots who promoted the intolerance that caused such a waste of resources? On the other hand, other witches would hear there was a border town in the kingdom where they could live a free life, and could even get preferential treatment. What would these witches think? No matter what age and time it was, the talent one possessed was the most important thing. Then everything is all right, Roland said. Next point, for the tariffs, taxes, and expenditures of the year, you previously gave me a short summary, let me have a proper look at them. Furthermore, those workshops in the city, the places that make ironware, textiles, pottery, and such, you also have to include the numbers and sizes. I'll need three days to prepare these records, but, Barav said as he first nodded, then paused, and looked like he wasn't sure how to continue. What is the matter? Roland asked. He was aware that finally, the moment had come where his ability was about to be tested. Yesterday everything he had done was questioned by the assistant minister because of his doubt in Roland, a scoundrel would always be a scoundrel, but having a bad character didn't mean that they were also brainless. To aid and harbor a witch, in the eyes of the assistant minister, was akin to declaring war on the world. Your Highness, I do not understand, Barav paused as he wrestled with his words, in the past, although you made trouble, it was always more harmless, but now, taking such a significant risk only to save a witch? The law to hunt them down was proclaimed by the church, and even your father, His Majesty Wimbledon III supports it. Roland thought for a moment and then asked, do you believe that this border town is a good place to live? Ah, this, Barav did not understand what this question had to do with the problem, after some time he gave his true opinion, no, it is awful, compared to Valencia, the city of golden harvests or the port of clear water, what do you feel my chances are of winning the rights to the throne against my siblings? The assistant minister opened his mouth but didn't answer. Almost zero. So I can only choose to walk another path, Roland continued as he watched expressionlessly as Barav took one step after another into the trap he laid down. The kind of road that would even impress my father. He did not state the point that the witches were not inherently evil because to do so would have little success. Barav had been the assistant minister of finance for 20 years and was regarded as a competent politician. For politicians, their personal gains were usually more important than the moral law of good and evil. Also taking the emotional route was not suitable for him, as Roland recalled the previous prince's actions, he found out that he really couldn't be considered as an upright and righteous person. So he chose to play on the eternal conflict between religious and secular authority, as the expanding power of the Holy Church was a constant thorn in the side of Wimbledon III. The Church claimed that the world worked in accordance with the will of God, and the Pope was the voice of God. If the people found what he said weren't the truth, even full of lies, the dominance of the Holy Church would be greatly shaken. With the phrase, the witch is not evil, so I want to save her, it would be hard to convince the assistant minister, but replaced with she is not an evil witch, and I can use this to attack the church, Barav could easily be persuaded to accept this conclusion. Regardless of how the territories of my brothers and sisters flourished, it was a foregone conclusion that everything would end in the possession of the church. They had already stepped on the divine right of kings, if only the pope can be considered as rightful ruler, then are they the actual rulers of this land or are we? Roland paused for just the right amount of time before going on, even my father will have to place his hope in me, a leader who isn't suppressed by the holy church, one who holds all the exclusive rights of a royal king, his choice would be very clear. Changing the enemy of the entire world into only the enemy of the church was easier to accept for many people, not to mention Barav, who was himself standing on the side of the royal family. 
In the same way, if he is aware of the extraordinary abilities they have, that they can pry open the grip of the Holy Church, the execution orders will be nothing more than a paper joke. While there is no possibility to guarantee success, it's not impossible either. Do you think I'm worth the risk? Roland stared at the assistant minister while saying these sentences in a row, do not falter now, Barav. You've been an assistant minister for 20 years, right? If I can become Wimbledon 4, the word assistant will be removed, or even further, something like, becoming the hand of the king is possible, hmm? Looking at Barav's back who was leaving, Roland felt relieved. It was easy to see that he didn't think much of his promise, this was normal, even Roland himself did not believe that this just recently scraped together plan, which was made up out of hubris could be realized. But that was not important, the key was to let Barab believe that he really thought that way. A sheltered noble's son could only think of a simple plan, not to mention that the fourth prince really hated the mentality of the church. At this time, the way to attract more witches was also paved. As for his real thoughts? Even if Barav knew them, he wouldn't be able to understand them. Roland summoned the maid, call Miss Anna and tell her she should come to see me. Roland happily thought that the following business would be the best. Chapter 6, Training, Part I. In the rear castle garden stood a single cottage, surrounded by a wooden fence. The cottage was built out of clay bricks and the ground was filled with loess, a mixture of sand, silt, and clay. There was also a pond in front of the cottage with a circumference of roughly nine and a half yards and with the pond filled with an appropriate amount of river water. This environment was not only difficult to burn but also had a certain manufactured feel, it seemed to be taken right out of a dream. Piled atop the ground were several iron ingots, these came from the blacksmith and were placed there by Carter. The pond was very charming, Roland had immediately taken a fancy to this place, but as for a laboratory, this place was still too crude. Roland shook his head, realizing that using some random materials and having them build a perfect lab was not possible. If he could find a suitable place in the future and collected all the resources, he would get Barav to start making him a workshop. Calling Anna over, who had been resting in the cottage, Roland asked, How are you? Did you sleep well? Looking at the bewildered Anna who emerged, Roland smiled. The witch Roland saw now and the witch he saw yesterday looked like two completely different people. After a thorough cleaning, her long flaxen hair draped over her shoulders like a shawl and had a soft and shiny luster. Although her skin hadn't been maintained due to her rough life as a commoner her youth made up for it, and the light dusting of freckles which were on the bridge of her nose added a youthful vitality to her face. Her body was still thin and looked as if a strong breeze could push her down, but her cheeks with a rosy color and the bruises and marks on her neck were much faded from yesterday. Roland suspected that witches received an improvement of their physical capabilities in addition to their magic. At least Anna's recovery rate had to be much faster than the average person's. Originally, since you experienced so many terrible things, you should be allowed to rest a few days, however our need at this time is very urgent, so I'll compensate you later. Roland said before telling the girl to turn around in a circle. This dress, does it fit well? Anna now wore clothes he had carefully selected from a variety of styles, all in order to satisfy his lewd tastes. The full protective clothing that the iron workers wore was too thick and not suitable for her, while the robes many mages wore in games appeared to be elegant and classy, in real life they restricted the mobility of the wearer and would quickly be turned to ashes. As for maid dresses, hey, is there any better clothing than this? Even if this world had no modern maid outfits yet it was not a big problem, the usual maid clothes were what the later generations were based on after all. So Roland directly took a set of clothes from Tyre and cut it to Anna's size, shortened the skirt, changed the long sleeves to short sleeves, made the, the round neck collar become folded and then tied it into a bow, thereby creating the new witch uniforms. This was matched with a witch hat, customized, black boots, ready, as well as a knee-length cape, ordered. In the past, Roland could only see this type of costume in a movie, but right now, one stood in front of him, looking so much like a witch from Earth lore. Your Highness, you. What do I need to do for you? Anna asked. Anna really could not keep up with the ideas of the great man in front of her, she felt that she was losing her ability to judge the situation. Being dragged out of the dungeon with a bag over her head, she believed she would soon be liberated of her cursed life. But after taking off the headgear, Anna found herself not seeing the gallows or the guillotine, but a magnificent room. Then a bunch of people flooded in, undressing and bathing her. 
from her armpits to toes, nothing was left unpolished. Next, it was the dressing room, Anna did not expect that she would have needed all these dresses to serve someone. She also never knew that clothes could actually be so comfortable, as they lay gently on her body, it was possible to feel the slightest friction. Finally, a white-bearded old man had entered the room, and after he ordered everyone else to step out, he had placed a contract in front of her. At this moment Anna realized, the man who had had said he wanted to hire her in the dungeon was actually this kingdom's fourth prince. When he said he wanted to employ her, it was not a joke. The contract clearly stated that if she worked for the prince, she would be paid a gold royal every month. Of course, Anna knew what receiving a gold royal a month meant, her father, who had worked in the mine all day, have had his pay determined by the amount of ore he was able to mine, but the best haul he ever had was only worth one silver royal. 100 silver royals could be converted to a gold royal, and even this depended on the purity of the silver royals. So, was her job to accompany the prince while sleeping? When she was bathing, Anna had heard the maids whispering, but she didn't think she was worth this price. With her blood tainted by the devil, she was a person full of filthiness. After she was exposed, everyone knew her real identity, even if the prince's curiosity was compelling to this extent, even if he did not fear the devil, he did not need to pay her any remuneration at all. That night, however, no one came, and she fell asleep peacefully. It was the softest bed Anna had ever slept in, so she just laid down and immediately fell asleep. The next day when she opened her eyes it was already noon, lunch had already been served in her room, delivered were bread with cheese and meats. Before, she had obviously been ready to die. She had even decided to willingly give up her life to atone for her sins. Those were her original thoughts, but after tasting the luxurious meal, Anna could not help it, tears started running down. Sauces and seasonings were mixed within her mouth, a strong hint of a spicy flavor mingled with a sweet taste, attacking, again and again, her taste buds. Suddenly, she felt that the world was a little bit brighter. Anna felt that if she could eat this food every day, then even if demons attacked her body, she would have more courage to resist, right? Now standing in this garden which resembled an old temple, nothing like her prison cell, Anna secretly made up her mind. Since the other party needed her, so whether it was to wear strange clothes, or even using the incredible devil's power, she was willing to try. So she repeated her question, but this time, she did not hesitate. Your Highness, what do you need me for? Right now, I want you to learn to control your own strength, try it over and over until you can send out your flames and receive them back freely. You mean the devil's dash? No, no, Miss Anna, Roland interrupted her, this is your power. The witch blinked with her eyes, her beautiful, big blue eyes. Most people in the world have the misconception that the powers of the witches belong to the devil, that they are incredibly evil, when, in fact, they are wrong, Roland bent his body down and met her eyes with his own on an equal level. But you already figured that out, right? Roland remembered Anna's chuckle in the dungeon, would a person who felt they were evil have laughed with such self-mockery? I did not use my power to hurt anyone else, she murmured, except for that looter. Self-defense is not a sin, you did the right thing. People fear you because they do not understand you, they only know that with training witches can become strong fighters, but they do not know how to become a witch. Unknown power is always scary. You're not afraid, Anna said. Because I know your power belongs to you, Roland laughed, but if that looter had such an incredible strength, I wouldn't calmly stand in front of him. Well, let's get started, he said. Chapter 7, Training, Part 2 The fire rose up from under her feet but soon faded away. This was already her 23rd attempt. And she had failed again. On Anna's forehead beads of sweat constantly arose, but she just used the back of her hand to swipe them away, and the crackling sound of rising flames immediately sounded out again. With no stops to rest, the end of an exercise was followed by the start of the next one. The witch uniform lied at the side, neatly folded, if Anna had not insisted on doing so, her new uniform would have already been burned to ashes. Fortunately, with Roland's identity as the fourth prince, getting a few spare robes for her to use was not difficult. He had his maid tire deliver a whole bucket of robes, gathered by the maids for Anna to use. The 24th practice had finally been effective, the flame was no longer rising from her feet. Instead, it appeared on her hand. She gingerly moved her arm, to try and have the flame go to her fingertips, but the flame suddenly shook twice and rose up her arm setting her sleeve on fire 
even spreading from the sleeve to engulf the whole robe. Anna dismissed the flame but her robe was already completely burnt, so she turned to the bucket and got a new one. This wasn't the first time this had happened, but whenever it did Roland would look away, so that his eyes were staring at other places, even if Anna herself didn't care about it. As a matter of fact, if it weren't for Roland's strong objections, she would probably have taken off all her clothes and practiced in the nude, in broad daylight. But even if Roland were to get a good view of her great figure that way, he wouldn't be able to calmly work with a naked girl, especially when the girl turned into flames and her body gave off an entirely different kind of charm. Roland shook his head, leaving his dirty thoughts behind. For the moment, it seemed that it was not easy to master the power of magic. The actual goal he had set for Anna was that she should control the flame to such a degree that she could release her flames from her palm or her fingers without destroying her own clothes. However, he also wanted the flames to have a high enough temperature to melt the iron ingots that were in the yard. After Anna's 30th attempt had failed but before she could make the next one Roland stopped her and told her to take a break. Anna looked at him in a startled fashion but she gave no other response. Roland had to walk over, he even had to pull the girl by her hand, leading her to the chair and forcing her to sit down. You are tired, when you are tired you should rest. Do not be too impatient, we still have some time. He helped her wipe the sweat off of her moist forehead and said, let us consume an early afternoon tea. Roland knew that the nobility of the kingdom of Grey Castle did not have the habit of drinking afternoon tea and this world's productivity was so poor, for ordinary people it was hard to have the opportunity to taste such delicate food. The people in this world were not familiar with three meals a day, not to mention a fourth meal. As for the noble sons, they generally gathered together around this time to have some fun in bars or casinos. The prince himself had to temporarily take over for the maid and cook if he wanted to create the custom here since they weren't familiar with it. Since he had to prepare some light refreshments and they didn't have any tea he was forced to substitute ale, it would be important to get some tea in the future. So in the castle's rear gardens, in a wooden cottage, the first afternoon tea party of the Grey Castle Kingdom was held. Anna looked at the dishes of exquisite snacks, not believing her eyes. Since when could something to eat look so good? Although she did not know the specific name of the cake she ate, it was pure white in appearance, and the bright red collection of fruit could make people feel their appetite increasing. Especially seeing the edges of the pastry decorated in an exquisite pattern, all of this forced her to change her worldview once again. Roland proudly observed Anna's bewildered expression, she looked like a country bumpkin, but also slightly frightened. Although the strawberries on the cream cake were marinated in sugar and didn't even taste fresh, there was nothing left of the cake. Roland found that appreciating the witch's face while she ate was more satisfying than doing so himself. Roland watched Anna, who was carefully placing the cake into her mouth, her blue eyes almost releasing a ray of light, and her hair gently swaying in the wind. Seeing all this his heart suddenly nearly burst and he thought to himself, it's not good to cook anything worse? Well, the cultivation of feelings as well as talent was also very important. Watching Anna while she practiced and accompanying her to enjoy the afternoon tea became Roland's daily life, not showing any interest in the government affairs. Barav helped him to take care so that everything was clear and orderly. Three days later, Barav delivered the information of the border town's industry that he had asked for to Roland's office. This was an absolutely unbelievable moment, the former fourth prince actually had never the patience to see such a big pile of complicated reports. As a matter of fact, even now he didn't have it. Roland needed only to read two lines of text until he he started to feel dizzy, and he directly said to Barav, you will read it to me. He spent an hour listening to Barav until he found a mistake, why were the border town's annual winter taxes and trade revenues zero? Since the winter temperatures were low, the decline in the harvest could be understood, but what was the meaning of directly returning to zero, had the local people the habit of hibernation? Barav coughed, sir, did you forget? In the winter months it's the time of the months of the demons, the town has no ability to guard its borders, all the residents must evacuate to Longsong stronghold. But rest assured, your safety is certainly the first priority. Months of the demons. Roland seemed to recall having heard that phrase before. He didn't take the take of ghosts and the legends of wicked witches seriously, he considered it as part of this uncivilized world's nonsense. But now it seems that the monsters are not a fantasy since the witches actually do exist. Then, what about the other famous legends like ghosts? 
When he got his education as a noble his history tutor had explained the month of the demons in detail. Every winter, after the first snow fell and the sun had gone behind the mountains, an intense darkness without light would descend. At that moment the gates of hell would open. The evil spirits from hell would corrupt living creatures, and turn them into the slaves of the devil. Some of the animals would change into powerful demon beasts with only one goal, to attack humans. Most witches were born in this season, and their power would be far stronger than usual because of it. Have you seen them? The gates of hell, Roland asked. Your Highness, how can ordinary people go see them? Barav shook his head again and again, don't say nonsense, the mountains they come from cannot be conquered, even being close to the mountains you will be affected by the foul miasma, first getting a mild headache, and then in severe cases even losing your mind. Unless. Unless what? Unless the person doing it is a witch. Only a witch can go and see the gates of hell because they have fallen from grace and became the devil's minions. Naturally they don't need to fear the touch of evil. Mentioning witches, Barav glanced in the direction of the garden. The demonic monsters, have you ever seen one? Roland knocked on the table to recapture the assistant minister's attention. Well, I haven't seen them. Like your highness, this is my first time coming to the kingdom's borders. In the center of the country, in the castle, only a few people would have encountered the real demons. If he needed to evacuate once a year how would he be able to develop this place? He initially thought that the border town was a barren land, but that it still had the potential for development, but now it seemed to be a pipe dream. When we resist the demonic beasts in Longsong stronghold, when they aren't invincible and when they can be killed, then why can't we defeat them in this border town as well? Longsong stronghold has a high wall. Also, the Duke Ryan's elite troops are stationed there. It is nothing like this border town, this small place definitely cannot be compared to it, Barav explained. From the start, the establishment of the border town was to provide an early warning to the stronghold. Therefore the town was set between the slope of the North Mountain and the Kishui River. So, his town was only cannon fodder to block the enemy. The only path they could cross, Roland laughed grimly as he heard this. Chapter 8, Months of the Demons, Part 1 If Roland wanted to develop his territory well, he had to build strong roots in this place. Even though this land was a wasteland it could be easily reclaimed. When the territory was too small it could be expanded outwards, but all talk was useless if the people weren't willing to stay. If they could be forced to abandon a plot of land at any time, then who would be willing to purchase it? Who would want to improve its production? After the assistant minister left, Roland called in Knight Commander Carter and ordered, assemble your men, go and find some of the local guards, hunters, and farmers, they must have lived here for more than five years, and experienced the months of the demons. If there is someone who can fight it would be even better. After the knight saluted and left, Roland rubbed his forehead, continuing to look at the data compiled by the assistant minister. The main exports of the border town were from mining and hunting, and the bulk of the imports were food items. Everything would be transported through Longsong stronghold or directly through the Kishui River in Willow Town. The mining exports contained all kinds of minerals, like iron, copper, sulfur, rock crystal, ruby, sapphire. This was completely against the concept of associated minerals. He thought of what Anna had said to him, that the North Mine had been rumored to be an unknown underground lair, until now there was no proven bottom to the mine and it was also unknown how many forks the mine had. The minerals exported by the town weren't paid for with the kingdom's gold royals, instead they were paid for with the foodstuffs that arrived. It stands to reason that, since the gems could be regarded as a high-priced luxury, that in these last five years the border town could save a surplus of grain, but in the end there was no surplus. In other words, the annual output of the mining of the border town was only enough for 2,000 people's yearly rations. Before the prince arrived here, the border town was governed by the duke who also took charge of Longsong stronghold, and he had set up this arrangement. In his point of view, he could save food and had a warning for the monsters. The fur trade was part of the local people's own proceeds. They ventured into the westward forest, hunted some birds and other animals, maybe sold them to the Longsong stronghold, or to the residents of the small town of Willow Leaf. Because of this, no transaction would be made in the border town and so, no tax could be collected. Roland thought, since he came, it couldn't go on in this way, the minerals could no longer be paid for with food. The Kishui River ran through the whole kingdom, and the traffic was not blocked. There was a transportation artery, even if we would no longer buy food from the Longsong stronghold. 
there were still other places to provide them. This was all built on the premise that he could stay here in the border town, blocking those damn monsters. Carter worked quickly, by the next day he had found two local guards and a hunter and reported, these two men are from the town patrol, every year they are responsible for lighting the beacon. The hunter said he and the demons had crossed paths, he returned with a demon beast head, which he cut off with his own hands. The three people bowed simultaneously. Roland nodded, permitting them to stand up. One of them stepped forward to speak. Honor, respected prince. Your highness, the first guard who was called up, was too nervous to even speak clearly. Brian and I are, are the people. Ah, uh, when it begins to snows, we, we will go to the north slope of the mining area, to the beacon tower. There, it's first possible. It is the first point to see the demon movements, if they cross over in great numbers, we will conceal ourselves in the forest, ignite the flames, from childhood. The road we will withdraw at and the boat is prepared previously, then we leave. Since you both were together, let your partner answer it. Roland covered his face to hide his disapproval, the demon beasts, can they be killed? The other guard was also very nervous, but at least he did not stammer, your highness, it should be so. They were just ordinary animals in the forest, but through the influence of the evil miasma they become manic and ferocious, but they can still be killed. Every month of the demons in the past, Longsong stronghold would send cavalry, cleansing the land from the stronghold to border town of the remnants of the demon monsters. The months of the demon last how long? Roland asked. Generally two to three months. It depends on the sun, said Brian. Depends on the sun. Roland asked doubtfully. Yes. The guard explained, your highness came to this town not long ago, so you do not know. In this border town, once the snow begins to fall it will not stop, until the sun shines again, then the snow will be gone. So the snow indicates the end of the months of the demon. Roland recalled that at least in Grey Castle it was not like this, basically the next day it would end to snow, also the sun would seem to be different. It is exactly like this. The longest time I experienced the months of the demon was two years ago, that lasted nearly four months, many people starved. Why, shouldn't be the grain reserves in Longsong stronghold be large enough to support the town? Roland asked. Brian's face got a little angry, they had enough. But Reynolds the municipal administrator who is responsible for managing such things declared that the amount of ore and minerals mined was only enough to buy food for three months, for the fourth month we had to deliver a new shipment of ore. But the months of the demons had not ended, we couldn't leave the fortress. So that was what happened. I got it. They were simply alienating the fool people. If Longsong stronghold treats these people who were living on the frontier with this kind of warmth like a spring wind, the frontiersmen would most likely want to stay and not leave, but at the moment it seems that the group of people behind Longsong stronghold were not the good-natured sort. Roland beckoned the last person forward to answer, while putting the name of the administrator into his heart. The third man looked courageous and strong, with a height of over six feet making Roland feel great pressure. Fortunately, he came forward on his knees. You said you killed the beast. Yes sir, his voice was low and hoarse, a wild boar species and a wolf species. Species. Roland repeated, what do you mean? This is the name of the demonic beast, your highness. The more fierce the variation of the animals was before, the more difficult it would be to deal with variation after. And they will emphasize the advantages of the body. The wild boar, its back fur would become extremely tough, even within a range of 50 yards it would be difficult to hurt it with a crossbow. The wolf species becomes more cunning, the running speed becomes amazing, to kill it, you need to set up the trap in advance. Stronger would become stronger and faster even faster, Roland nodded as he heard this, but they are still animals. They are, but they are not the most terrible kind of enemy, the hunter said until here and then he had to swallow his saliva, before he was able to talk further, the worst ones are the mixed species. They are devils incarnate, only hell is able to create such a horrible monster. I have seen a hybrid. It had not only beast-like strong limbs, but on his back was even a pair of huge wings, allowing it to fly short distances. And it always knew where I was, no matter how much I tried to hide, it could always detect me. It was not hunting its prey, your highness, it was just teasing the prey. The hunter Lihul lifted his clothes, showing a large scar extending from the abdomen to his chest as he said, I lost my consciousness and fell into the Kishui River, I was lucky to survive. Such a monster exists, 
Roland felt that the world became more and more like a fantasy, a strong wall can block all ordinary kinds of demonic beasts, but if they could fly what should he do? Mixed species should be very rare, right? Chapter 9, Months of the Demons, Part 2 Not many, your highness, the hunter replied. During every months of the demons there will only appear two to three mixed species demons, otherwise Longsong stronghold would be in huge trouble. Well, you seem to be very observant, Roland ordered the man to stand up and asked, What's your name? You don't look like a man from my kingdom of Grey Castle. Half of my lineage hails from the Mojin clan, the townspeople call me Iron Axe. Mojin clan, the people from the Shaman kingdom, located southwest of the Barren Lands, it was said that they were the descendants of giants. Roland searched within his brain for any memories related to the Mojin clan and realized that Iron Axe did not use the name his clan called him by, rather using the name given by the people of Border Town, and apparently he did not want to have a relationship with the Shaman Kingdom. As for why, since it was obvious that he was from the southwestern border of the desolate lands, he estimated that there were a series of sad stories involved. But for the moment those stories weren't important, everyone was welcome in Border Town, regardless of his or her background. Roland clapped his hands, that's not why I asked you to be here, Carter, bestow each of them with 10 silver royals, then they can leave. Thank you very much for the reward, your highness, said the three in unison. Afterwards the people were taken away by Carter. When he had finished his task, Carter returned once again and asked, your highness, why did you ask them these questions? Do you want to stay here? Roland didn't express any opinion and instead asked, What do you think? This matter is out of question, your highness, said the knight loudly, according to the statement from the hunter, even a wild demon bear would be difficult to cope with. Outside of 50 yards a shot with a crossbow would have no effect, we would have to wait until it closed to 40 yards, or even until 30 yards before making our shot, only our elite soldiers can accomplish this. Plus the demons are too numerous, and we can't rely on strong walls, only standing side by side with the local guards to stop them. I'm afraid that the casualties would outstrip the accomplishments, our defeat would be assured. You already saw what a witch is able to do, so why can't you think positively? Roland sighed. This. The witches are evil, but Anna. Miss Anna does not look so, as your knight commander, I have to seek truths by looking for facts. If I would give you a city wall, would you think it will be possible? What? For a moment Carter suspected that he had heard wrong. If I give you a wall, between the north slope of the mountain and the Kishui River, Roland stressed every word he said, although they would not be like the enormous walls from Grey Castle, but to stop animals, they should still be able to. Sir, do you know what you are saying? The knight didn't know whether to be angry or to laugh, even your nonsense should have a limit, if you don't stop, you will have to excuse my lack of manners. We still have three months, don't we? I looked at the past records, the first snow usually falls here at the end of the second month from now, even if we had three years it would not be enough. Building a wall would require many workers, for setting the foundation they have to compress the earth and every one or two feet would have to be reinforced, otherwise it would have a high risk to collapse. This would be the simplest of the earthen walls, Carter shook his head again and again, brick and stone walls are even more difficult to build and it would need hundreds of masons who would first have to cut the stones or bake the clay into bricks. Afterwards they would need to build it block by block. Your Highness, all walls were built this way, without exception. A city being built in the time of a day and a night, that is only the stuff of legends. Roland indicated he had heard enough, I see. You don't need to be so upset, if there is no reliable wall in place, I will evacuate with you to Longsong Stronghold. I'm not going to give away my life in this place. The knight knelt down, I will protect you. Afterwards in the beautiful castle gardens, Roland nipped at his bitter ale. Looking at Anna who was intently eating cream cakes, his mood recovered a lot. He had decided to stop the demonic beasts at the border town, joining the elite soldier with the town guards, he would also include the farming location by expanding the area the guards patrolled. If he wanted to build the wall, connecting the north slope of the mountain and the Kishui River within three months, he must use an appropriate technology from the modern times. It was not the case that Roland had suddenly thought of this, previously he had checked the edges of the border town, although he didn't go personally, in his memory remained a clear picture the northern slope of the mountain and the Kishui River were only separated by 600 yards at their closest point, it was a natural bottleneck.
and due to the all-year-round mining in the North Mine, it was surrounded by rock gravel mined from the cave. These gravel cast-offs were ash grey, containing plenty of calcium carbonates, which could be used as limestone after grinding. With the limestone he had his solution, it would be equal to cement. Yes, this would change the history of mankind, to be able to build with a water-hardening material, with raw materials which were easily to obtain, which were simple to prepare, it truly numbered among one of the most efficient tools for tilling the fields. Roland estimated the needed time, even if he would implement new technology, even with cement he wasn't sure if it was possible, the amount of cement they actually needed was too big, he wasn't sure if they could calcine so much cement powder within three months. And concrete toughness would be inferior, in the end they would need to reinforce it with steel, thus the probability to succeed in building a concrete city wall was not that great. They had to maximize the usage of the existing materials and save cement, so building a fieldstone wall would be the most appropriate choice. The so-called fieldstone, was a stone which had not undergone any grinding, it was just a natural byproduct of mining. This stone, because of the irregular shape of the edges and corners, there was no way to directly using it to build, instead it first need to be processed by the stonemason into usable bricks. But building a fieldstone wall while using cement as binder was possible, regardless of how oddly shaped the stone was it could be used. The gap between the stones was filled by the cement, saving cement, and using leftover materials. With this the big direction was set, but the actual implementation, he was afraid he would have to do it by himself, thought Roland. Regardless of whether it was the Kalkin cement or fieldstone wall, both were new things. Except for himself, no one had seen these things, and also no one knew how to make them. He was afraid he would be very busy for the next three months. You, look here. The sound of Anna's clear voice came from behind him. As Roland turned, he saw a small cluster of flames in her palm quietly burning. There was clearly no wind, but the flame tip was rising up and down, as if it would nod to her. She shook her finger, and the fire was like a toddler, moving slowly towards the tip of the finger. In the end, it stood at the top of the index finger, simmering down. You did it. It was an incredible scene, Roland felt admiration from the bottom of his heart. This was not illusion magic, nor a chemical trick, but it really was a supernatural power. But this was not the most attractive thing to Roland, many time more dazzling than the flame, was Anna's look. While she was intently staring at her fingertips, the lake water limpid eyes were reflecting the vibrant flame, as if an elf sealed within a sapphire. The traces left from the prison torture had already faded, though she rarely smiled, but her face was no longer lifeless. On the young lady's tip of her nose was a speck of sweat, the rosy color on her white checks emitted vitality, even looked at also can let a person feel cheerful mood. What happened to you? Ah, uh, nothing, Roland noticed he looked at her for too long, he removed his gaze and coughed well, then, try using it to melt the iron. In the past few days, except for eating and sleeping, she always repeated her practice, in front of the hard-working enthusiast Roland could only endlessly blush in shame even in the face of the college entrance examination he did not work so hard. Apparently she will not need long, until she completely grasps this power, Roland thought. Following that, his ideas of new projects can be set on the agenda. Chapter 10, The Stonemason. This week, the weather wasn't good, the sky was always grey, Carl Van Bates mood was like the weather, gloomy to the extreme. Walking on the wet stone street, from time to time there were people greeting him. In in this town, Carl run a school. At Grey Castle those noble children with the talent to go to school, attended a different kind of college, here he was also teaching for the children of ordinary people. Therefore, in this border town, he had a very high reputation. Hey, Mr. Van Bate, good morning. Sir, is my son doing all right? When are you free, Carl, let's go fishing together. At ordinary times Carl would always smile and would respond to them, but today he just nodded, never saying a word. Since he witnessed the hanging of Anna, in his eyes the world appeared to be flawed, or to say since his departing from Grey Castle a crack seems to be rising into existence, but he deliberately turned a blind eye. He used his busy work to numb himself, and to a certain extent, he even used the innocent smile of the students, to cover this crack. Until Anna died, he thought, that the world had not changed. But after the hanging, the crack not only did not disappear, but it expanded. Regarding Anna, he recalled the memories of the previous half a year. Within the more than 30 children in her class she stood not out, with a normal appearance, 
She was never a person of many words, but there was something that let Carl felt a little impressed. That was her passion for knowledge. No matter what they would teach, characters or history, she could always remember it on her first try. Even if it was the boring history and evolution of the religion, she was always seen holding a book. He had seen the young lady help to take care of her neighbor's sheep. Sitting down in the sun, Anna would carefully brush the sheep's hair, gently, like someone would do it with a baby. The picture he could still remember very clearly was the sweet smile of a happy girl, no matter what or how he could not think of her as a sinister and evil person. Later there was a fire at her place, and Anna's mother unfortunately passed away, afterwards Anna never came back to college. He never saw her again, until a week ago, when she was proved to be a witch and hanged in the town square. Be tempted by the devil? An unclean person? Evil? All fart? In his heart, he had for the first time doubts about the Holy Church, for the first time he doubted the knowledge they imparted. Whether or not Anna was a witch, he didn't knew, but she would never turn evil? If a yet to mature girl, a girl ignorant of the world and full of curiosity could be called evil, then the administrative officials of Grey Castle were from hell and possessed by the devil too. In order to save several hundreds of gold royals, they deliberately stole stone material in exchange, leading to the collapse of the half-finished theater building. More than 30 masons of their guild had died. But were they hanged? Not even one. The judge finally ruled that the leader of the stonemasons was unsuitable for his job, he was punished into exile, the stonemasons were forced to disband. And Carl, who knew the inside story, fled out of the limelight and left Grey Castle, he followed the road into the west, eventually ending in the border town. He managed to establish a college, with a lot of students, he already got to know the new neighbors, he found new friends, but the crime from the officers of Grey Castle was always engraved in his mind. Now, once again he felt the world was mocking him what was evil, the gods of heaven could they really see it clearly? The last overwhelming straw for Carl was Nana. Nana and Anna were nothing alike, one could even say they were the complete opposite. She was a very lively girl, quite well known in the college, only seldom attending class, and when she was there, she could never pay attention, only lying in the grass. If you asked what she did, she would giggle for a while, and then she would answer that she was looking at a fight between a grasshopper and ants. Nana's face was always full of laughter, it seemed to be her nature. The evil world had nothing to do with her, at least in the college, she could always be happy and was able to laugh. Carl was even a little curious, if she had ever cried since she was born. Until two days ago, when suddenly, with a long face, Nana came to find him, teacher, will I be hanged too, like Anna. This let him knew, his student, Nana had became a witch. Ah, isn't that teacher? Come over here and help us to look at what it says. Carl felt as if someone had pulled his sleeve. He looked up and found that he had arrived at the town square. Many people stood around the board and shouted, that someone should let them know what the announcement said. Hearing Van Bates' name, everyone consciously get out of his way. Teacher, you coincidentally came, help us to look at it. You are right, originally it was Meg who would read this to us, but the end result was, that before he could tell it to us, he got stomachache and had to go to the toilet, until now he did not come back. Like always, he nodded with a smile, then he explained in detail the content of the bulletin board to everybody who listened. But at the present Carl discovered it was impossible the smiles and enthusiasm of these people was not fake, but for him it was, but seeing this, it became more and more intolerable to wear the fake mask himself. The post of the hanging of Anna was placed above the notice, everyone was cheerily discussing about it. In a sense, you were her murderer, he could say it only in his own heart, your ignorance and fear had killed her. Carl had to swallow down his emotion, took a deep breath and walked to the front of the announcement list. The prince called for hands to help with the construction of new buildings for the border town, a variety of different kinds of jobs is available, he said. But I am also one of her killers, and what qualifications do I have to blame them? The one who told them that witches were evil, was it not me? Carl had a bitter taste in his mouth, look, everything they knew I have taught them, word by word the holy church doctrine, I always thought I taught well, to hell with it. Stone grinder, they have to be male, from 20 years to 40 years old and healthy. Payment, 25 bronze royals per day. Mud craftsmen, not limited to gender, over 18 years old, they should have experience in masonry, the daily payment would be 45 bronze royals. Handyman, requiring to be men, 18 years of age or older, 
12 bronze royals per day. No, he had to do something, if Anna's death has been irreparable, then at least he couldn't let Nana die. Carl heard his inner voice shouting, the Mason Guild collapsed when you did not stand up, Anna was hanged when he did not stand up, do you like what happened when you held silence, helplessly looking at these lovely child, when she would be sent to the gallows. But what could he do? Could he flee with Nana out of border town? He had his own family, a family who traveled with him from Grey Castle, just when their lives got better would they need to leave again. Even Nana herself, who was born into a rich family, would she leave her fixed place of life? Stonemason, not limited to gender, age is not limited, preferred are people who participated in building for the municipal administration, like the stronghold, or other fortifications, the city hall recruit for long term, with monthly remuneration of one gold royal. Additional term, people with rich experience and excellent performance, could get granted an official position. After reading the notice, the people become even more noisy, paid monthly one gold royal, this is even better than the payment for the stronghold cavalry. Will you go? Can you build a fortress? You, just don't only stare at this, go get a job, every day you would get paid for the work, count together you would not get much less than with hunting. Indeed, when going to hunt it is possible to lose one's own life and when you have to dodge it is also possible to get lost. Carl Van Bait did not pay attention to this, he concentrated on the seal and signature on the final notice. It was the autograph from Roland Wimbledon, the fourth prince. Did the prince not know that the month of the demons was already coming? Whatever he wants to build, at the moment it's not a good time to start. It seems his highness knew nothing about constructions, provided that oneself could become the stonemasons, would he then brought to his attention. Carl had suddenly an idea, perhaps through this recruitment, he could see the prince himself, the highest ruling in border town. This thought let Carl swallow a mouth of saliva, could he convince the prince that the witches were not evil? There were rumors of his royal highness unique ideas, he should have a character different from ordinary people, but also that he hated the church very much. Maybe he could do it, he thought, although in the end the hanging of Anna was ordered by Prince Roland, but everyone could see he was not willing to do it. The prince himself was still in his early twenties, this should make it easier to understand, those girls were still in the marriageable age, how will they suddenly become evil and do unforgivable acts? Of course, there was a possibility that Carl would end as a witch helper, he would have to go to the gallows, together with the witch. The church's law stipulates that anyone who shield a witch or who would plea for leniency, should be regarded as someone who abandoned himself and become a demon disciple. Only the prince, the prince who hated the church, could be his last hope, since only he could declare the church's law as a waste of paper. Carl prayed in his heart. Even though he did not know to which god he should pray, he closed his eyes and prayed for a blessing. In memorial of the dead Anna, for the sake of Nana who was still alive, and for himself, so that his own heart crack would no longer expand. He decided to take the risk. Chapter 11, Third Princess. The sea breeze has become so cold. While gazing at the boundless ocean surface, Garcia Wimbledon said while stroking out her wind-tangled hair with a feeling of regret in her voice. Because the winter is coming, she said, looking back at the handsome man standing behind her and giving him a reply. Although this is the south, it is not the deep south. There, people don't understand what winter means. During the winter our fleet cannot be in the port, the ocean current will hold them down, we will be unable to move a single step. So at this time, they should be at the last voyage. The woman turned around, Ryan, how much time has passed since the black sail fleet has set sail? Two months and four days, the man answered without hesitation, if nothing else happens, within three days they will arrive at the port of clear water. She laughed, I hope they can give me a sufficient surprise. Ryan looked at the woman in front of him, his heart was filled with emotion. When reflected by the autumn sun, her gray hair had traces of silver in it, her long and narrow eyes were a reseda green. While looking at her, you would feel an indescribable sense of oppression. Due to staying at the coast for a long time, her skin had gotten slightly rough, it was not longer as white as all the other women of the royal family were, but Ryan did not complain. In his eyes, Garcia had the temperament that cast any other beauty into the shade. Compared with those inbred idiots from the Grey Castle flock she appeared to be different, rather the daughter of King Wimbledon III was a true genius. She possessed the wisdom and pride of a noble woman, however unlike the other nobility, who would scrupulously abide by common sense, on that point, she was even a bit like the civilians, 
breaking away from the ordinary, filled with expectations, with an extremely rich spirit for adventure. Of course, no civilian would have this kind of ability and vision, to join the rank of a duke right away, compared to her, even the other aristocracy appeared to be lacking in foresight. All of the trade income of the port of Clearwater was to be reinvested into the fleet construction, no coin was to be left in their treasury, the light of a miser would not shine very far. Hiding a gold royal in the cupboard would be without any meaning, when you don't use it, it will be like a stone. Only when you take it out, can it reflect its own value. The point is, to spend it wasn't equal to losing it, as long as the investment is on the spot, the reward you gain, will go far beyond your own investment. This auspicious method, Ryan could still deeply remember her telling it to him, it was almost like she was anointing his head with the purest bomb, it easily broke through all the inherited concept of his former teachings. Compared to those nobles who spent their whole day saving and trying to increasing the amount of their gold royals, Ryan had the feeling that this was the true method of a ruler. So he has boldly placed his life under Garcia's command, vowing to follow her to the port of clear water. After they had arrived here, Ryan had found out, that the third princess was far more than her philosophy not only was she a person of philosophy, furthermore she was also a person of action. At the center of her plan was her black sail fleet, and on the path to her ambitions, there was no hindrance that was allowed. Already five years had gone by, Garcia's forces have infiltrated the port of clear water, organized and prepared her black sail fleet, and then, her father, Wimbledon III started the strive for the position of the king. In other words, even from the beginning, she had already walked in front of all the other heirs. Let's go back inside the room, the wind is becoming more and more powerful, Garcia said. Her palace was located at the Blue Water Port, above the natural harbor. The tower-like building seemed to be a protector stationed above the shore. On the top of the tower was a circular terrace, with an unobstructed field of view, it was possible to have a bird's eye view from the entire harbor, seeing the coming and going of the merchant ships. Today, after her five-year operation, the business plan in the port of clear water had already begun to take shape, every six months a bark would be launched. Furthermore, she had already obtained the people's trust. While the third princess seemed to be in good mood, Ryan hesitantly raised his biggest doubt, which has haunted him for months. Your Highness, there is one thing I do not understand, he said as he shut the door, leaving the roar of the sea breeze outside. You may speak, she nodded while smiling. How could you have foreseen all of this, even before the king has announced the king's order? He had also thought that it would be impossible that her father Wimbledon III would mention it to her in advance, but even after having carefully thought this matter over he still hadn't come to a conclusion. Everyone knew, that the second prince was the heir that the king valued the most, the king's order had been set up for him. This point could be seen by everyone, since the second prince had gotten Valencia as fiefdom. Could she have guessed all of this on her own? Furthermore already having started five years ago laying out her plan? God, she was only 18 years old. Foreseen. She showed a funny look, do you take me for a witch? I don't have that kind of ability. ERM, but. Furthermore I did not know that my father would declare the strive for the king order, paving the way for his treasured second son. In fact, there exists no connection between the strive for the king order and my plan. There was no relationship. When Ryan suddenly became aware of this aspect, his mouth became wider and wider. Seeing the expression of disbelief on Ryan's face, Garcia smiled. Don't tell me I should have waited for my father, to first tell me that I should fight for the throne, would I have then have had the ability to fight for the throne? Similarly, would it really in the end have been the one who govern his town the best be the one to sit on the throne of Grey Castle? I thought you understood my plan when you had seen the Black Sail fleet. So that's the reason, Ryan murmured, her fleet is not only for the battle of the throne. This fleet belonging to the third princes could change the sails after leaving the port, robbing the ships from other cities and countries. Similarly, the third princes encouraged the people to go out to the sea, to participate in her black sail fleet. She promised, all the loot would become the property of the ship's captain, the port of clear water would never collect any tax toward this profit. This move would bring her huge wealth. So this time she had simply ordered the Black Sail fleet to sail straight south, to plunder any ship which passed the Endless Cape, as well as the people of the Southern Shaman. And these measures were not just for money. She did not take the plundered wealth to build cities or expand the land trade, she just invested it back into the yard and continued to build more ships. In the past few years, 
she had gained a large number of experienced sailors and fierce warriors, and also embraced the people's hearts and minds if she couldn't continue to govern. All those who had participated in the plundering of the ships and villages would also be sent to the gallows. The best in governance of his territory would end on the throne of Grey Castle. No, Ryan now knew, to be able to sit on the throne, she would need to posse's numerous warships and soldiers, then she could follow the San Juan River, even reaching out to pressure the city of Golden Harvest. You knew that you would be assigned to the port of Clear Water. This, contrary to what one might think was unexpected, a deal to increase the business value of this place, Garcia shrugged. Originally it was a payback to the church who tried to fool me. Related to the church? Seeing his counterpart haven't said anything more, Ryan also did not dare to question further. But he knew, even if Garcia had not come to Port of Clear Water, this place would still have followed her will, and moved according to her desired direction. Putting those matters aside, she poured herself a cup of black tea. The little trick from before seems to have failed. Ah, yes, Ryan who hurriedly recovered his thoughts, replied, there is only news coming from Border Town, they reported that the pills have failed. There is no news from the other places. No news should mean they were killed by my brothers, nothing to be surprised about. Originally they were chess pieces who had been easily arranged, only to be used in the meanwhile. However, she changed the subject, for other pieces to fail is normal, but I would not think even my fourth brother would still be safe and sound. To tell the truth, I'm a little disappointed. Kingfisher said in the secret message, that the prince certainly ate it, but. A failure is still a failure, I don't want to hear any excuses, Garcia interrupted, soon it will be the time of the months of the demons. Our lovely brother will have to go searching for refuge in Longsong stronghold, right? When the moment arrives that the demon beasts invade, I am afraid that he will need to stay for a long while inside of the stronghold. Write to her, tell her to take hold of this opportunity. I would like to see, whether the goddess of fortune will stay by the side of fourth brother once again. Yes, your highness. You go ahead, Garcia waved her hand. When Ryan was about to leave, the princess called to him once more. Ah, yes. I seem to recall that the pill had been bought from an alchemist master, wasn't it? Ryan nodded. What did he say back then? The pill will be colorless, tasteless, and will melt inside water, if it enters the mouth it will be incurable, a guaranteed death, it was his latest alchemical achievements, right? Garcia yawned, hang him. Chapter 12, Firing. Roland stood by the kill in the backyard, waiting for the first batch of cement to be released. The brick house that he had designed for the cement production was 15 meters long and 4 meters wide. The front and back each had a door, the front door was as spacious as possible, it was so that people could easily transport materials into the house. Instead the back door was only one person wide, the only use was to let Anna secretly into the firing room. Therefore, he also built a wall which was halfway around the house, the import and export arrangements were guarded by knights they were Carter's men, their loyalty was beyond doubt. The cement production process was very simple. First the limestone would be grinded into powder, afterwards it was mixed with clay, iron powder, and then it would be calcined with either a dry or wet method. It could then be used after the final grinding together with the plaster. The raw materials were very common, only the iron could be difficult to obtain and hold in a large number, the critical fact lied in the process of reaching the right calcine temperature. Roland did not remember the specific temperature needed to produce cement, even if he did remember it, he did not have the possibility of measuring and controlling the temperature, whether it was with an infrared thermometer or a thermocouple temperature measurement gun, both tools were unavailable, this made the production of the cement countless times more complex. He only knew that the temperature was almost similar to the melting point of iron, and that the calcination process was also a difficulty in the production of cement. In the era of less advanced smelting technology, maintaining the temperature of the furnace has been a problem for all people. The heat loss of an ordinary open furnace was too great, it was difficult to maintain a temperature at 1200 degrees. But then he would also require a high temperature resistance furnace, he would also have to figure out how to make fire brick. The traditional iron-making blast furnace would be heated up to the point of melting, the temperature may be up to the standard, but the narrow chamber was too small for cement calcination to take place, Roland was afraid that the time before the months of demons was not long enough for him to prepare all of this. Therefore, Roland's design for the kill did not have any heating measures, he relied purely on Anna's capabilities. 
The broken down particles of limestone and clay were all mixed together with water into a slurry, this was then evenly spread within the kill. The knights then locked the door and walked away. Afterwards Anna would enter from the back door, use her fire to bake the earthen slurry until it melted into the iron powder. Roland was somewhat restless, this was his first step towards upgrading border town. If he couldn't produce cement, building a wall in three months would be just empty talk. Without the wall, there would be no people who would be willing to stay in this place. Whether it was in real life or within fictional literature, if you wanted to progress, a stable base was always essential. Your Highness, can this kind of product really hold the stones together? Carter, standing at the side of the fourth prince asked. Although the prince had told him that this was the latest results from the research of the alchemists of Grey Castle, he was still skeptical. After all, those people really haven't made any useful products so far. Who knows? Anyway, that's what they said it would, Roland spread out his hands in resignation. The world of alchemy and astrology were known as the sage arts. In the mainland, these professions were all very popular. In general, the royal family would develop their own alchemist and astrologers, meant for refining and predicting fate. For ordinary people, these studies were too classy. In light of this, Roland would naturally make the source of cement formulas out to be from the alchemists in the capital. As for whether the chief knight believed him or not, it didn't matter. Through the window they could see the flame gradually stop burning, it seemed that the calcination was complete. When Roland stood up and went to take a look, Carter had been driven away from the gardens, so he was waiting alone by the front of the back door for the brick. The gates creaked open and Anna walked out. The first thing Roland did was to drape a robe over her body, then brought a cup of water for her, how are you? The face of the witch was full of dust, due the wet processing system and the amount of dust was also low, but the hot air needed for the calcination still produced quite some dust. She was not wearing a mask, staying inside for more than 10 minutes was obviously not too comfortable. She coughed and nodded, the slurry has already changed into powder. Roland waited until the temperature in the kill cooled down enough, although he needed to wrap a wet towel around his head, he still grabbed the shovel and stepped into the back door. He was instantly surrounded by the hot air, for some time he felt that it was difficult to breath, the skin on his hands was roasted immediately. Fortunately, taking a shovel of powder did not take too much time, otherwise if he stayed for a few minutes longer in that environment he would fall into shock from the high temperature. Is this what you wanted? asked Anna, who was now wearing her witch outfit. It looks very much like it. Roland spread out the fine powder flat on the ground, using his finger to sense the temperature, to know if it is definite we will need to test it first. What's the use of it? It is for building houses, or repairing bridges and the roads, it can be used in many other places too. If it is successful, afterwards the people will be unafraid of the wind, or that their homes would be unaffected, by the cold, rain or snow. With his other hand, he patted the girl's head, this was only possible thanks to your ability. Anna lowered her head, Roland did not know if it was or wasn't an illusion, but he felt that the girl's breathing became faster after he patted her. According to the theory, it was important to fire the grinded materials together with the gypsum. With this, it would be possible to adjust the hardening time. But now it would be needless to think about it too much, after a short break Roland took the shovel again and grabbed some more cement. He then called Carter who was standing outside the courtyard over letting him prepare three different mixtures of the powder with the sand to compound cement mortar. The chief knight completely didn't mind this manual work, to him, doing this kind of work was many times better than the substitute fights he had for his highness, every time he got into a brawl with the other young lords while he was on an outing with young ladies, prostitutes, in Grey Castle. Because it was already inside, iron powder was not added to the raw material, the color and luster that came out of it was lighter than normal, appearing to be an ashen grey. Roland spread the grout over a brick, and he then put down another brick on top of it. The cement solidification process would take around four hours, but taking into account the instability caused by the production of the cement, he intended to simply wait until tomorrow before seeing the results. The second day early in the morning, Roland, Carter, and Anna all hurriedly rushed to the firing place in the backyard. When he opened the door, he saw that the cement had the appearance of solidification condition, the two pieces of brick were tightly bound together. The consolidation appeared to be uneven, and on some places, it appeared frosted over. Roland crouched down, scraping off the aroused frost, 
and trying to press his finger into the hardened cement, the touch made his heart feel pleased, the cement surface was solid, completely different from the touch of rammed earth, namely, using his nail to scrape against it didn't leave any traces. Carter repeated the action of the fourth prince, attempting to move the rock, but he also did not succeed. He even resolutely kicked against the side of it with his foot, until the connection between the cement and earth broke, but the two pieces of bricks were still firmly bonded together. At last, he swung the hilt of his sword against the brick, but only a small piece at a corner broke away. This is the effect of cement, Carter immediately realized its purpose, this is incredible. Yesterday it could flow like a melted candle, just one night later, it's like a rock. With this kind of material, building the city wall will go much faster. As long as we have enough stone, we could even build a wall around the border within five years. What's the use of that? Roland did not accept the suggestion, a tall wall would be unable to stop any enemy coming at us from the inside. I would rather turn the old wooden homes of border town into solid concrete rooms, so that my people no longer need to worry about a natural disaster turning them homeless. The chief knight was speechless, he really did not expect the fourth prince with all his kinds of bad habits to say this. In the future, you will see, Roland reaffirmed himself one more time about the importance of the road he would walk on, with regard to the numerous battles he had to fight in the future, science and technology were his best allies. And knowing this, the help of the witches was the first step on the path he had to walk. Chapter 13, City Wall Soon the cement production got on the right track, in order to permit Anna a sufficient amount of rest, the kill was only used two to three times per day. To obtain the most out of each calkinning process, they had to gather more raw materials. For this, Roland once again issued orders to recruit more workers, until their current numbers were doubled. But he also knew that he could not only rely on Anna to do all the firing. People who were working long-term in a dusty environment, would eventually become sick. Furthermore, once the scale of future production increased, Anna alone would not be enough to satisfy the demand. The witches should not be used as consumables. Instead, they should serve as an engine to promote the development of civilization. Although Roland was already aware of this fact, at the moment, he could only invest all of his energy and manpower in building the city wall. After all, if they couldn't stop the demon beasts, everything else would soon become unimportant. Digging out the foundation for laying the city wall had already started in order to connect the northern slope with the Kishui River to increase the production speed, he himself personally took charge of the overall project. He dug out the first shovel of earth with his own two hands in front of the shocked masses of surrounding onlookers. Roland thought after the problem with the cement was solved, that building the city wall would be easy and relaxing. But he soon found out that his prior experience in engineering wasn't enough to understand a single word from the project. How deep and wide did the foundation have to be? How to resolve the different heights of the sections? How to ensure that the more than 600 yards long wall would be built in a straight line? He had previously seen the construction of a road by a group of young men. They were looking at a scale on their measure instruments, it was called a theodolite and level, right? But both of those tools didn't exist here. As an unfortunate mechanical engineer, although Roland and the civil engineer next door were both called the two engineering dogs, the content they had actually learned was poles apart. Of the mud artisans that he'd hired, no one had ever been involved in the construction of any major projects, it could even be said that his own understanding was better than theirs. Therefore, building the wall started very slowly, it took an entire week to dig out just half of the foundation that they needed. Once a project got out of control, it would be difficult to say how the final product would look like. For example, this dugout foundation which was hard to dig, came out as a shallow groove, rather than the foundation of the wall. It was more suited to be called a drainage ditch. Despite Roland's descriptions, the width that they dug out was more or less different for each person. Thus, the width clearly became out of shape, becoming more and more narrow as it went. While standing at a distance, the foundation practically resembled a curving and twisting snake. Even so, Roland was unwilling to stop the project. With little else than the digging on his mind, as long as it was not the time of the firing, which was Anna's job, he would stay at the northern slope for the rest of the day, adjusting the direction of the pit's extension with the naked eye, slowly moving it forward. Simultaneously he also doubled the reward for enlisting stone craftsmen. Fortunately, this predicament did not last long, when Roland was preparing the sixth cement calkinning, 
Barat the assistant minister reported that a stonemason had responded to the recruitment. It was said that he was a former member of the Mason Guild. The people who were waiting for an audience had already been made to wait outside the hall. When he got this information, he nearly burst for joy. In his memories, the Grey Castle Mason Guild was a famous organization, even the fourth prince had heard of their name. But in the end, because of a construction error, they had been ordered to disband. But how can we finish this without help from stonemasons? Bring him in, Roland put on a calm expression and nodded. He originally wanted to tell Anna that she should also leave, but he then thought it wouldn't be a problem. Border Town had more than 2,000 people in it, very few had seen the true face of the witch. Moreover, her look now, in a bizarre new dress, and her appearance before, of her wholeheartedly courting death, when she was not her usual self, was worlds apart. He estimated that even if she was seen, she wouldn't be recognized. Carl van Vaart felt restless when he was led into the courtyard by the night, he intended to inform his highness, that this time of year was unsuitable to carry out such a large-scale project. After acquiring his highness trust, he could slowly change the prince's view on witches. In the rumors, his highness always acted wildly, what should he do when it seemed he would go the contrary result of his advice? With his thoughts moving in a whirl as he bowed down, when he lifted up his head again, he suddenly stopped and stared blankly, the girl at the side of his highness looked so familiar to him, so familiar that he felt like he was dreaming. Carl rubbed his eyes, then looked once again, he could not help but cry out. Anna. Roland's heart stopped for a beat. How was it possible? He just wanted to hire a craftsman, but who could have known that the craftsman was also the witch's neighbor? He could tell, that the other was absolutely familiar with Anna, if not, it would have been impossible to recognize her immediately. He looked at Carter. The chief knight got the hint, he immediately pulled the latch, blocking the only exit. Venerable. Teacher. Anna's reaction let Roland's spirit, circle for a while before he came back to complete consciousness, what, teacher? It's really you, Anna, I, I, Carl only felt his eye socket warming up, and then something started flowing from it. He knelt powerlessly on the ground, constantly repeating, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, very good, too, well. After Carl van Bart was able to calm his mood, he slowly stood up and then bent over once more to pay tribute to Roland again, I'm very sorry, your highness, I forgot my manners. This, in the end what is going on? Aren't you a mason? I used to be, when Carl had regained a calm mood, his speech became very fluent. His highness had not killed Anna, the one who was hanged on the execution ground was substitute, being aware of this point, he already knew how he had to progress further. Although it was unclear why the other party rescued a witch, but regardless, even if his highness wanted to take her as his concubine even that would be much better than being crucified. This showed that the prince wasn't afraid that the witches were the evil incarnation as described in the rumors. He described his experiences of living in this border town, since the time he fled out of Grey Castle, including the fact that he had opened a college here, and that he had found out that Nana Payne, one of his students, had also become a witch. Finally, he pleaded with his royal highness, that he would also take Nana into his palace, so that she would be safe from exposure. Anna, who stood to the side had a caring expression on her face, while listening to the plea for Nana, but from the beginning to the end she never said a word. Yet another new witch. This truly was important news, and good news too, but he seemed to remember the name Payne. When Roland quietly asked the assistant minister, he found out that it was in fact, the small aristocratic family of Border Town. You can take her to see me, if she is a witch, I will make sure, that she doesn't get hurt, Roland promised, but I cannot take her away from the Payne family, especially when she had not suffered any threat from her maternal family. Also, me rescuing Anna is not what you think. He considered it and thought that telling the truth would be better, I need her help. The idea that they are the devil's force is absolutely nonsense. I believe that the power of a witch, regardless of whether it is good or evil, can be controlled. So Anna, Nana, or any other witch, as long as they do not break any other laws, I won't condemn them to death. Next, we will turn to the town business, did you participate in the construction of the Grey Castle city walls? The prince quickly changed the topic back to the construction matters. Yes. Carl nodded. Although, his highness the fourth prince did not resemble his prior knowledge of the prince, he did not expect that the prince would need a witch's assistance, however, his wish to protect Nana was accepted, that was enough. 
Well, I'm going to build a wall from the Kishui River to the foot of the northern slope. The goal is to ward off the demon beast invasion. From now on this project is your responsibility. Chapter 14, Ability. Your Highness, how tall and wide should the city wall that you're planning to build be? It should be at least 15 feet high, 6 feet wide, allowing for 4 men to advance side by side on top of it. Roland had to nod inwardly, professionals truly weren't the same as ordinary people. They would first ask about the technical parameters and then determine the construction program. So it will require for us to dig a trench one man deep to stabilize the upper part of the wall, in addition, for a 6 foot wide top of a 15 foot high wall, the width at the base will need to be at least doubled. Carl replied quickly, thus just digging the trench also will consume a lot of manpower. Your Highness, if you give me 150 workers, I should be able to dig the trench the months prior to the demon's arrival. A trench cannot stop the evil beasts, Roland answered non-committally. That's true, but if we build the upper section of the city wall with stone masonry, it will take three years time. In order to only stop the evil beasts, you needn't build the wall so high, approximately 12 feet high should be enough. The width can also be reduced by a third, resulting in a 6 foot wide foundation. With simultaneous digging of the trenches and the building of the wall, as well as an increase of the workers to 200. In that way, I should be able to finish it by January, in the next year, before the arrival of the demons. Carl paused, then said, please forgive me, your highness, this really isn't a good time to start. In case the construction of the wall is not on time, even if the trenches were dug well, they will still lose their original form after the soaking rain and snow throughout the winter. When you return, instead of finishing it, you would only need to spend more time and manpower to clean up the softening trench, excavating and deepening it one more time. Say, in case we only build the wall 12 feet high and 4 feet wide, how long would you need to dig the trenches? It should be finished within one and a half months, Carl replied. Then do it according to this plan, trenching and masoning at the same time, so that we succeed a month prior to the arrival of the demonic beasts. Roland waved his hand, interrupting Carl, I know what concerns you, but take a look at this, this is the latest work from the Grey Castle Alchemical Workshop. Naturally, he had no time to allow the stonemason to see the gluing process. Instead, he showed him the two bricks he had glued together earlier. Fortunately, when the prince spoke, almost no one dared to question him. When Carl heard that this alchemical adhesive cement could turn from a liquid into a solid form overnight, furthermore that it came with a sky-high adhesion effect, his face exposed his incredible shock. As a stonemason who had dedicated half of his lifetime into his work, he could naturally recognize how great this invention has gone. Apart from stone binding, the most important fact was that it was possible to freely shape its figure? Wouldn't that be equivalent to no longer needing a second cutting and polishing process, being suitable for any loosely shaped stone? The time-consuming processing stage could be abandoned altogether and the construction rate of any building could be raised to a whole new level. This alone was exciting enough. Roland looked at the expression on Carl's face with satisfaction, and once again asked, What do you think, will three months be enough? Carl Van Bart's voice somewhat shivered, if you're right, no, no, I mean. If the alchemical workshop described this matter correctly, I, I'm willing to try. Very good, I will let people summarize the detailed information of cement for you. If there are still anything else you need to discuss with me, then feel free to talk with my assistant minister, Roland laughed, Mr. Carl, from now on you will be the chief of the employee's office. On the next day Roland saw Nana in the afternoon. The little girl stared blankly at Anna, clutching her clothes for a long time, before saying, I'm already dead. The first time Roland saw her, he had to admit that the power of the witch did not only give them the ability to use magic. To some extent, it also changed their appearance and temperament. She and Anna were very different types, but both of them had a unique charm. This feeling had nothing to do with age, and it was also unrelated to their situation. Even when Anna was in jail, waiting for her death sentence, the radiance she emitted still continued unabated. He searched through his entire memory, whether it was a noble lady with a very good upbringing or a street walker in Grey Castle, neither had given off such an aura. If one insisted on describing it, then compared with other women, it was as if the witches were the colors in a black and white photograph. She was brought over by Carl Van Bart, who afterward retired tactfully, leaving only Roland, Anna, and Nana in the backyard. You're not dead, 
Anna too is alive and well, Roland had to hold back a smile, I'm the fourth Prince Roland Wimbledon, and you're dash dot. I'm Nana Payan, when the little girl heard that she herself did not die, her expression turned lively again. She ran straight to Anna's side, beginning to chatter with her, unconcerned, disregarding the identity of Prince Roland Wimbledon. Roland naturally didn't care what a 14, 15-year-old girl had to say. Instead, he leaned on the round table and poured himself some ale, appreciating the day-to-day -day behavior from the side. Anna was clearly a little bit calmer now. In the time Nana would take to say more than 10 sentences, Anna would say only one. Having said that, while Anna was only 17, she already exuded a big sister kind of feeling. Roland couldn't help but think, when she grows up, how outstanding will she become? When Nana's speaking slowed down, he coughed and opened his mouth, then asked, Miss Payne, I heard from your teacher that you have awakened as a witch. Compared to the vast majority of people who used the word fallen when becoming a witch, Roland preferred the term awaken. He was not naive enough to think that all witches were immaculately white, people who already had a malevolent personality would only bring about greater destruction. This was the same with weapons, they could produce violence, but they could also be used to resist violence. The crucial point in it was in the person who was holding the weapon. Perhaps the church's propaganda of the massacres caused by witches was based on the facts, but using that as proof that the whole witch community was guilty was the greatest of injustices. Nana's face once again stiffened, she whispered, will you hang me? No, of course not, the gallows are for heinous criminals. You are not one of those and Miss Anna is not one either, so do not worry about that. She took a breath and nodded, I'm not sure. The teacher said witches were coerced by the devil and afterward gained some kind of evil powers. See could I be possessed? Moreover, I have never seen the devil. When did you find out that you, yourself, have become different? Roughly a week ago, Nana muttered, I saw a bird with a broken leg and wanted to help it. And suddenly, I felt something flowing out of my hands. There were things flowing out. Roland asked, what happened then? Ah, it suddenly enclosed the bird like a sticky bubble of water, Nana's head tilted when recalling this, then the bird's leg was healed. Does she have the power of healing? Roland's heart began to race, he was very clear what this ability would mean. With the absence of antibiotics, there was no modern medicine here, people with traumas or infection would likely encounter death in these ages. As such, rapid wound healing was almost the equivalence of saving many lives. This ability was very limited in promoting the progress of civilization as a whole, but it had an amazing significance to every individual's life. He immediately went to the door, looking for a knight to bring a living chicken. If it could be proven that what she had said was true, he might be able to use this as a source to change the border town's view on witches, ending the current situation of their ruthless persecution. Chapter 15, Flattering Oneself Seeing the knight accept his order and leave, Roland returned to the table, you can heal small animals, so why would you think witches are evil? The teacher said, witches can do what ordinary people cannot do, and sometimes it may not look bad, but that would be only a trap, set up by the devil to tempt more people. The girl trailed off. I really have not seen the devil, I swear. Of course you haven't seen him, that's merely the church's lie, your teacher was also deceived by them, Roland soothed. The church lies. Nana's jaw dropped down, why? Roland shook his head, giving no explanation. Even if he explained it, they wouldn't understand it. Before a civilization develops to a certain extent, these kind of outlandish things always happened. Even when no one benefited from it, people would automatically contribute natural disasters, man-made disasters, or incomprehensible phenomenons as a product controlled by someone behind the curtains, from historical point of view. This was a boulder which in majority women had to carry on their back. And in this world, witches who owned a feasible power of unknown origin became an easy target for the church. Thinking about it, it was absolutely impossible for the church to ignore this kind of extraordinary appearances, no matter what. They would have to confer all witches as saints, naming their powers as the gift of God, or kill all of the witches, stating they were the devil's spokesperson. However, once you choose the former, the majesty of monotheism would receive a heavy blow, as soon as a witch not belonging to the church emerges. In the case of all religions believing in other gods labeling the witches as saints, they would all be people chosen by God, and so whose god would be the only true god? Polytheism could only exist on the premise that all gods truly exist, capable of restricting each other. 
Since God was non-existent, this was all symbolic crap that someone had created by running off their mouth, so why permit the opposite side to exist and share this world with them? So anyone would claim their God as the true God and believe in monotheism. And when it come to a member of another religion, there was only one way to go, liquidation. In the end, they could only choose the latter option, to spare no effort in killing all the witches. There was absolutely no relation to the devil, it was only for their own benefits. A living chicken was prepared by the castle kitchen right away, and then the knight carried it by the wings, while it still fluttered and kicked in confusion. The next thing made Nana dumbfounded, Roland took the silver knife from his waist and had the knight grab it so that he could stab the chicken's body. When the chicken was wounded, Roland allowed Nana to come up and treat it, after curing it another stab followed, this way they proceeded over and over again. After half a day, when the chicken finally took it last's breath, Roland had a general understanding of Nana's ability. She could restore damaged parts, including cuts, tears, fractures and bruises. In case a part was missing, such as a cut-off chicken leg, she could not make it grow new one. However, under full use of her ability the broken claw could be reconnected again, allowing the cut to be healed. Ultimately, she could not reverse death, once the chickens died, her treatment was ineffective. During the entire course of treatment Roland did not see any trace of the sticky water, instead, she simply put her hand on the chicken's wound, and the wounds would heal at a rate visible to the naked eye. After these series of tests, Nana's physical exertion was not large, she was at least not sweating like Anna after her training. Only Nana herself was dissatisfied, she felt that the treatment of the chicken was unfair, to such an extent, that at the end of the experiment she widened her eyes and pouted at Roland. Well, don't just stare there, come and have something to eat, upon seeing her, Roland without any better option had to summon the afternoon tea to shift her attention. This move was already tested against Anna, he thought that very few girls of their age could resist the temptation of delicious desserts. As it turned out, Nana's performance in front of the pastries was not much better than the former's. After eating the cake, Roland allowed Nana to leave. Anna asked, why did you allow her to leave? Just like me, she's also a witch, right? She still has her family, and at the present time her family has not found out that she has become a witch. Anna whispered, it's just a matter of time, right? Sooner or later, Roland sighed, so, it's a little late, but, do you want to see your father? She shook her head, no wavering was seen in her lake-like eyes. It seemed that the betrayal of her father had made her completely lose her hope. She didn't have a family to return to before, at least now she had a friend. Nana will always come back, in fact, I'm going to have her come here every second day to let her practice her own ability. Hearing this, she blinked her eyes and nodded quickly. Do you want to go back to Carl's college and learn together with the other children? Anna did not answer, but he felt that he could understand her inner thoughts. These kinds of circumstance are unlikely to last long. As long as I am here, you will one day be able to live like normal people. Anywhere you go there would be no one to arrest you, much less send you to the gallows. One day this will be reality, said Roland stressing every single word I promise. Since Carl took over the city wall project, Fourth Prince Roland suddenly settled down. He spent every afternoon in the castle garden, accompanied by Anna and Nana. Now they had no further need to prepare extra clothes for Anna's training, even if there were leaping flames on each of her fingers, she could still operate them skillfully. Now it was unlikely to be like before when a mishap occurred, igniting her own witch's uniform. Nana also changed her clothes into the same witch uniform Anna wore, at first she felt a little reluctant about the practice, but the afternoon tea session appeased her. Seeing the two witches come and wander around in his backyard greatly alleviated the bitterness in Roland's heart. Occasionally, he went to the north slope at the foot of the mountain to check the progress on the city wall. After more than two weeks of construction, the wall had already reached a hundred yards in length. In this era where a theodolite to measure the distance didn't exist, every day, at the same time, Carl would have the craftsman determine the distance and evenness by using the shadows formed by the sun with the help of a wooden pole. They built a watchtower every ten columns to stabilize the city wall. Such a large-scale building project was naturally also noticed by the town's nobility, but in addition to finding Barav and asking him about this project, they took no further actions as if this had nothing to do with them. Roland did not complain, since their possessions were at Stronghold Longsong, they would definitely not stay here and help him guard the border town. 
He could even imagine these people getting together and ridiculing Roland, saying he had overestimated his capabilities. Not only had the nobility noticed the change, but the merchants as well. In the previous years, the traveling merchants would purchase animal fur, but now it appeared that there was no possibility to purchase it. One after the other, they began to set out and return to the stronghold. Naturally, the anger about their empty-handed return was vented to Roland. The news regarding the fourth Prince Roland Wimbledon's building project to repel the demonic beasts in the months of the demons had already spread along the Kishui River, many calling it just stupid and ignorant. At this point, no one thought that he could hold border town, even the majority of locals did not believe it. After all, the impression everyone got from the fourth prince did not include the courage to fight. Regardless what he did, in the end, he would take refuge in the stronghold. In this manner, while everyone was discussing him, Roland welcomed his first winter after crossing over. Chapter 16, Future Route The flames in the fireplace were in full bloom, dispersing the chill which penetrated through the doors and windows. Above the huge fireplace hung the skull of a deer with long horns. In the glow of the fire, the shadow's reflections of the horns on the back wall appeared to be huge claws and teeth companions of skull. Opposite of Roland stood a long deep red wooden table laden with parchments and books. Most of the documents only needed his signature to the execute the order. Usually, Roland would only be here to handle official work, but since he had transformed the castle room into a three-room office he had grown to love working here. Through the windows at the end of the floor he could see the town spreading out beneath his gaze, and in the horizon were the endless mountains. The mountains were almost impassable, they separated the kingdom of Grey Castle and the wild lands in two. The northern mountain slope was just a branching pass of the mountain range. At the foot of the window he could see the wood-fenced garden, which Anna used to train. In order to provide a convenient place for afternoon tea, the brick pool was already transformed into a long table. If the weather was good he could go down and lie underneath the sun, or maybe even take a nap on top of the custom-made rocking chair. Although it was small, it was nice to have your own personal garden as well. In his former life, if you wanted to sit on the stone steps of a real castle, it would be almost impossible. Just to look around, you had to spend money to buy a ticket. But now, he not only had his own castle, but a whole town as well. Your Highness, Recently we spent a considerable amount of money from your treasury to recruit tradesmen and handymen. If this continues, I'm afraid our treasury won't last until next year's spring." Barav handed the parchment with the recent reports of the financial situation to Roland. Originally, Border Town had a very simple chart of income and expenditure. Their line of income came from ore mining and trade with precious stones. This line of income was in the hands of the Longsong stronghold. The output of the North Slope mine was directly exchanged for wheat or bread, without any taxes, and the exchange of resources was presided over by the stronghold. Described in simpler terms, the North Slope mine was a joint stock item of the Longsong stronghold nobility. Those nobles stationed in the border town could be seen as the custodians of the shareholders, their fiefs were mostly in the east of the stronghold. They came here only for a limited time, and there would be different people each year. In fact, Border Town had less than 30 years of history. Compared with the nearly 200 years of Longsong stronghold, it was simply a newborn baby. Duke Ryan had only intended to establish an outpost here to get an early warning in case an evil beast invasion began. He had never expected that the pioneers who discovered a mine rich with mineral resources in the northern mountain slope would just settle there, practically making a small municipality, named Border Town. In order to prevent stealing, the duke did not accept manpower sent by the other nobles. Instead, he employed the local residents. Even criminals became miners, and food was prorated based on the output of ore each home provided. The stronghold would just provide some food and commissioned employers throughout the year. The stronghold only paid a fixed amount of money, it wasn't based on the mining output. Of the 2,000 inhabitants of Border Town, more than half of them were in the mining services. Another line was the town's other industries, the blacksmith's shop, tavern, textile shop, and so on. From them, Border Town usually received a modest amount of revenue throughout the year, but it was quite difficult to have money left over by the end of it. The appointed lord didn't govern Border Town seriously, since Roland was sent there from Grey Castle. Instead, he had decided to stay in the stronghold, without returning to Border Town. As a result, when Roland wanted to hire someone to repair the walls, he could only pay them from his own pocket. If it was the fourth prince from before, 
he would have certainly never done it. But the current Roland, as long as he gained a firm foothold in this border town, even if he had to spend all his property, it would still be worth it. Anyway, after the ore trade would no longer be settled with food, the town's income would still be no more than a drizzle. The only question was if Longsong stronghold was willing to give up their monopoly of trade with border town. This would be similar to entering a tiger's den to seize food, but the inventory data provided by Barav indicated that the mining efficiency was low and the transportation of ore was inefficient and inconvenient. In fact, the value of the annual output of ore mining was more than 1,000 gold royals, but for the entire stronghold that was only a drop of water in the bucket. The only ones benefiting from this were the partners of the investing aristocracy. In consideration of the long-term development of Border Town, this line of income must be recovered. Roland's mind was clear on the fact that even if these people could fully recover their investment from the last 10 years and longer, they would still not easily let it go. While mosquitoes were small, they were still meat. Besides, this was a seedling that could be useful to make money by reprehensible means. Previously, he was willing to give the investors certain benefits and compensation such as purchasing for half the price and such. However, the case of selling a full ship of ore for only half a ship of cereal, this kind of incident was not allowed to happen again. While Roland was focused on pondering over the list of items, Barav was attentively watching him. In these three months, or to be more exact, in the most recent month, some inexplicable changes had occurred to the fourth prince. Perhaps outsiders were still uncertain, but he was by the prince's side every day, so this kind of change could at most keep him for a short time in the dark. During his time in Grey Castle, fourth prince Roland Wimbledon was only known for his bad reputation. He would insist on his own way, behave unscrupulously, without any aristocratic demeanor, things like that. In short, no big mistakes were made, only unceasing small ones. Compared to his two brothers, his position differed greatly. When His Majesty sent him to Border Town, he was filled with disappointment. If His Majesty hadn't promised him the position of an official finance minister after the fight for the throne, he would have quit and walked away long ago. Early on, in his first two months in Border Town, the fourth prince always showed an extremely childish behavior. He managed to offend the local nobility over and over again. Fortunately, the town itself was of a very small scale so even if all administrative positions were vacated and he had to fill those positions with a dozen civilians, they would still be able to go on. But from now on, it would become something different. When had the change occurred, he thought, it was probably. It was after he saved the witch that the changes appeared. Barav didn't doubt that the devil had the power to enter a body, or that the prince could be manipulated by a hidden witch. But this was extremely unlikely, if the devil and witches had the capability to control someone, why would they choose the fourth prince? Wouldn't it be better to directly control his majesty or the pope? Another point which dispelled his doubts was that he had witnessed the prince holding the God Punishment Lock. This was the church's trump card to handle the witches. The power of any demon would collapse in front of the God Punishment Lock, but Roland could hold it directly. In other words, in the case that he wasn't the fourth prince, when even God had no power about him, it was needless to fear the devil king, so was it necessary to expose him? To preserve one's own life was most important. The prince's style still continued in his own way, behaving unscrupulously, yet the feeling Barav got was that both styles were not at all the same. No, Barav thought, it should be the opposite. The biggest difference would be the purpose. He was aware of what Roland was planning to do, in order to achieve the goal, he had to employ some methods which were difficult to understand for ordinary people, like the time when he tried to persuade him to save the witch. Perhaps the planning was not very wise, but the prince really had planned in advance, and believed in the results firmly without any doubt. This ability was the one that caused anyone to feel most puzzled. The title of king might be possible for any of Roland's brothers and sisters, but certainly not for the fourth prince himself. This thing was very clear, because how could he develop such a small place like Border Town? Even the gods couldn't do it? In the end, Roland came up with a crazy plan, the crazy plan to set up a defensive line outside of Border Town, so that they can develop better than the city of Golden Harvest. Was he really thoroughly convinced that this project would be successful? If he was merely a madman, it would be bad enough. But for Roland, who vigorously built the city wall, that did not seem to be the case. He really planned to defend this place, merely with the help of the alchemical product cement, to build a wall, which is for the common sense, 
almost impossible. Within Barav's family there was also an alchemist, but he had never heard of an alchemical workshop refining such a thing. The solution for the construction of the wall was based on something no one had seen before, in the end, was he only confident in himself, or was it just his reckless behavior? To what extent did Roland's plan go, and in the end how much do I know of Roland's scheme? Barav found himself interested in the approaching days. Chapter 17, Ambassador, Part 1 This is such a rotten place. When stronghold emissary Petrov stepped out of his cabin, the smell of decayed wood hit him in the face. The surrounding air was damp and oppressive, causing people to feel entirely uncomfortable. He lifted his head up and inhaled through the nose. The sky was completely overcast, and it seemed that heavy rain was incoming. The last time you came here was a year ago, said the assistant to the ambassador while he graciously put a wool coat on the ambassador's shoulders, there is nothing here, except stone. It was a year and a half. Petrov corrected. Every season the duke chose a different person to come around. The last time I was in border town, it was summer. But in addition to ore they have more, like a good variety of furs, and... What? His assistant had a blank look on his face. Petrov shook his head and did not answer. He crossed over the side of the ship, stepping on the pier covered with moss, and a plank gave off a creaking sound from under his foot. The wood would probably continue to support the dock for a few years, but then it would break down, he thought. Border town not only had stone and fur, but even, land. But speaking about this hadn't any meaning, the assistant was only an unknown city hall officer, he was unable to see this point. Between Longsong stronghold and border town was a large area of wild land, which still needed to be cleared for cultivation. On one side was the impassable mountain range, while on the other side was the Kishui River, long and narrow like a corridor. As an outpost for the stronghold, if they assumed responsibility of the defensive line, it would also bring the wide expanse of land into the possession of the stronghold. The land had not been cultivated, so it didn't require any recuperation before plowing. Instead, many circles of crops could be planted, and on top of that, it had a natural line of defense on both sides. In the end, to produce enough for everyone to eat, it was not required to expend much effort. The food shortage in border town was just a way to relieve the stronghold of the problems caused by a growing population. In the future border town and the stronghold should become one territory, rather than the two separated territories they are now. The only drawback was that it would need a three to five year long operation, as well as large sums of money in advance. Unfortunately, when talking about the foresight of investment, most of the nobility were bad businessmen. Hey, how can it be that the yard is empty? The assistant pointed to a distant piece of land. Shouldn't they have the ore ready? Petrov sighed softly, we will go to the castle, and have an audience with his royal highness. Wait. Mr. Ambassador, do you know if he will receive you? He didn't know if his majesty would, but in his heart he didn't want to say it. Let's go, the stables are just in front. Trouble came now that the stronghold and border town were divided into two separate territories. Because of the king's order to fight for the throne, the fourth prince was left in solitude. How would a normal aristocratic or royal member ever be here? Of course they would take all of this land for themselves. Selling minerals and jewelry in exchange for food and bread? I am afraid that the prince's eyes only can see gold royals. If it was himself, he would do it. To helplessly watch as one's own territory output is exchanged for only food. The ambassador was afraid that nobody would accept this situation. In addition, the products didn't have to go to the stronghold. Most of the nobility forgets the fact that the Kishui River didn't end at the Longsong stronghold. He could sell the ore at market price in Willow Town, in Dragon Mountain, or even in Red City, then take people from their cities as new refugees, it was nothing more than a little further down the river. What could the Longsong stronghold do then? Block the river, and cut off the prince and his party? It would simply be a defiance of the royal family of Grey Castle. Everyone knew that the fourth prince was least likely to become the king, but without a doubt, it would still not be good to defy him because he was still of the king's blood. The ambassador and his assistant rode on rented horses, coming slowly forward on the stone road along the river. The stables only had old horses of mixed colors, even if they rode slowly, the horses would still tremble. And for these two stupid horses, he had still to pay a deposit of two gold royals. You see, sir, is that a boat from Willow Town? Hearing his aide shout, he looked in the direction he pointed, only to see a ship with a willow leaf on their green banner, 
hanging on their single pole, slowly sailing down the river. The whole waterline was very high, indicating that it was loaded with cargo. Petrov blankly nodded, but his heart sank, the prince moved faster than he had expected. If the prince had begun to contact those towns and cities downstream, the bargaining chips in his own hands lost value. He originally intended to acquire the ore for 30% lower than the normal price, so that he would still earn something. Not to mention, after the stones were turned into polished jewelry, the price of luxury goods were several times higher. Unfortunately, this was not a monopoly, nor was it only his family who had the final say. Participating in the mining project in Border Town were six noble families. If they lacked majority consent, then there would be no resolution. However, they were slow in reacting, thinking that the situation was the same as before. Or, they thought the mining project was not worth that much attention. Anyway, the remaining five were indifferent, even his own father confidently rejected him. In fact, they were wrong, the low reward of the mining output was mainly due to few other trading possibilities, if they transitioned to the normal trade, they could earn more. And if you earn more, you will be likely to produce more or next year. Could they achieve the monopoly scheme they thought out before? In all likelihood, no, it certainly couldn't be realized. Petrov thought, since he could see the empty yard, the prince did not intend to let these minerals be exchanged for poor quality wheat, he had to contact the other buyers. If they still wanted to hold this line of business, a 30% discount was his best bargaining chip. Since the distance between Willow Town and Border Town was further, this would end in an increase of the transportation costs, but Willow Town had more than one source of ore, the first price they would offer would likely be lower than the market price by half. As for Dragon Mountain and Red Town, the price would be even lower, so the fourth prince would agree to Longsong Stronghold Monopoly, especially for the gem trade. But the problem was, if he signed a contract, would his father agree with it? The other five families believed that it would be a simple matter to let Border Town surrender, should he dismiss the interests of the family to get the contract? After all, in their eyes, Border Town was still controlled by their own Longsong stronghold, and everything could be given or taken away by them. They slowly crossed the town, heading toward the castle located in the southeast corner. It was not Petrov's first time here, but this time the owner had changed. When the guards saw the ambassador, they immediately went in and informed the lord. Fourth Prince Roland Wimbledon quickly summoned Petrov, and when the two were guided into the hall, the prince was already sitting at the main seat waiting. Mr. Ambassador, please sit down. Roland clapped his hands and let the maid bring hearty meals. Grilled whole chicken, a wild boar leg with mushroom stew, butter bread, and a large bowl of vegetable soup. Obviously, in this borderland, the royal children hadn't the slightest impairment of personal enjoyment. Petrov naturally didn't hesitate, he traveled by ship from Longsong stronghold to border town, and even with favorable wind it took two days, if it was a multi-masked cargo ship, it would have been even slower, maybe three to five days. There was no kitchen on board, so it usually came with eating dried meat strips or wheat bread. Seeing the billowing hot dishes, he felt saliva surging in his throat. But thanks to years of training in aristocratic culture, he could maintain perfect dining etiquette. On the contrary, his highness eating habits were a lot worse, in particular his use of the knife and fork. Petrov noted that in addition to the carving knife, the fourth prince used a pair of small sticks. When the slicing was completed, he used the sticks for all the other moves. And it looked like, two sticks were much more convenient than a fork. What do you think? At the end of the meal, Roland suddenly questioned the ambassador. Ah, uh, what? For a moment the ambassador lost his spirit. This, Roland shook the hands with the sticks, before answering Petrov, the iron fork, for most people it is a luxury, not to mention a silver fork. When you are eating directly with your hand, it is very easy to put dirty things together with the normal food in the belly. Disease enters by the mouth, you know? The ambassador didn't know how to answer. He didn't understand the meaning of diseases enters by the mouth, but according to his understanding of the previous sentence, Roland was probably referring to the dirt stuck on food, and it would be easy to get sick when eating it. But when someone tried to diagnose the sickness, no one knew the reason why they died. How many sticks do you think you can get by cutting down one oak tree in the forest? These sticks are clean and easy to get. I'm going to promote this in the town. The prince sipped his wine and continued, of course, now my people don't get much meat to eat, but I will slowly change that. Petrov felt relieved, he now knew how to answer. Routinely, 
He expressed his support and blessing, but in his heart he did not agree. Let all the people have meat? That would simply be whimsical, even Greycastle could not do this, and this border town was in this desolate land. Chapter 18, Ambassador, Part 2 The banquet went on. There was a fairly harmonious atmosphere during the dinner. The fourth prince didn't talk about or trade as he found it inconvenient to say anything. When the prince told the maid to deliver the dessert, Petrov tentatively mentioned the trade. Your Highness, according to the previous procedure, today should be the day when you deliver the ore, but I don't see any ore in the terminal yard. Roland put down his small wood sticks and nodded, unfortunately, the northern slope mine collapsed a while back, this month my people can only try to resume production. However, the gravel from the collapse has not been cleared yet. According to the schedule, we will be able to start mining again at the beginning of next year. The mine collapsed? For a moment, Petrov was stunned, was that a coincidence? However, he quickly realized that the prince did not have the need to lie. Otherwise, if he himself went to the North Slope mine, everything would be clear, so it was obvious that with a lie Roland would only beat his own face. Then, what happened to the ore from before the collapse? That wasn't much, the amount mined was according to the convention, my people were unable to mine more than the amount set by the convention. Roland emphasized the words in a practiced manner, Mr. Ambassador, you should also remember what happened during the months of the demons two years ago, right? Of course Petrov remembered it, the cold lasted for four months and in border town nearly one out of every two people starved to death. The cause of this was municipal administrative governor Reynolds' avaricious and insatiable greed. Between the aristocracy there was naturally internal opposition, some nobles even wanted to punish Governor Reynolds afterwards. But at the end of this incident nothing happened, only because he was the husband of the duke's second daughter. Now when this was mentioned by the prince, Petrov got a bad feeling. This time it will be even worse, Roland sighed, with what we could mine before, it was probably only enough for two months of food. I will try to support my people but I'm afraid they won't survive the winter, sir. The old ways of trade must be abolished. Petrov opened his mouth, but he didn't know how to refute. He wasn't a professional diplomat. In face of such a good reason, he really couldn't point out any problems, so he could only delay the matter for the time being. Your Highness, I have to express my regret. This time will not be a repeat of the tragedy before. I can afford to loan you a month of food, and when your people are able to resume production next year, they can slowly repay the debt. I already sold the ore to Willow Town, we can slowly repay you with their money. But. There is no but, however, Roland immediately interrupted him, they are willing to buy the ore with gold royals, and at the same time they sell wheat, cheese, bread, honey and more at market price, which we can buy with the royals we got from the former transaction. But, Mr. Ambassador, even if you are willing to lend us a month of food, would the other five factions agree with your decision? As far as I know, it isn't even easy for Duke Ryan to reach an agreement with the other families. Petrov kept silent, the fourth prince had put it right. Not just the remaining five, he even feared his own father wouldn't agree. If they wanted to maintain the monopoly, it would be necessary to modify the trading scheme, but he did not know how he could have the last word. He was called an ambassador, but in reality, he was just the spokesperson. Perhaps the Duke did not want someone to come to any private agreements with Border Town, right? Whether it was during the time of the former governor or now with the fourth prince, he assigned a different candidate every season, and these people were never the rulers of their families. Regardless of the outcome, he had to try, so when he thought up to this point, Petrov spread out his last cards. 30 He held up three fingers, Longsong Stronghold will buy the ore and rough gems for less than 30% of the market price. I think this price should be higher than the price of Willow Town, your highness. Roland responded, indeed it is higher, but there is still the old question, can you guarantee the agreement of all six families? I will immediately go back to Longsong Stronghold tomorrow. After I get an agreement, I will come back with a new contract. But my people are unable to wait that long. You should know, that if you want to reach an agreement between the aristocracy, it is usually very time consuming. Your Highness, the cooperation with Longsong Stronghold would be a better choice for you and your people. Willow Town is too far away, so you and your people can also escape to them during the months of the demons. When speaking up to this point Petrov felt that his throat became dry, but the road isn't easy, it is quite dangerous. Good God, what the hell am I doing? Petrov's heart pounded madly, 
did he really threaten the prince? Ha 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 ha, surprisingly, Roland did not fly into a rage, but instead laughed, Mr. Ambassador, you seem to have mistaken something, I never thought of retreating to Willow Town. What do you mean? Of course, I didn't intend to go to Longsong Stronghold either. Roland watched the ambassador's expression with interest, I'm not going anywhere. Petrov momentarily doubted whether his ears got it right or wrong. Fortunately, the prince didn't let this awkward silence continue for long, and he then explained, this winter, I will always stay in Border Town. Border Town will become the new border of our kingdom. Do not be so surprised, my friend, I'm not spouting nonsense, I can show you the new masonry walls at the northern mountain slope. City. Wall. Yes, connecting the North Slope Mountain and Chinchui River is a 12-foot high and 4-foot wide stone wall. With this, we can defeat the demonic beasts here at Border Town. Petrov felt his brain power wasn't enough, when the former ambassador got back last season, he did not mention any city walls. No, at that time the lord of Border Town and the people were at Longsong Stronghold, how could they build the wall with the limited manpower they had? In other words, when the fourth prince arrived, he immediately began to build the city walls? Even so, until now it had only been only three months, so how could they have built something in this short amount of time? Also, what was it His Highness just said? 12 feet high and 4 feet wide, connecting the North Slope Mountain and Red Water River? Petrov estimated this in his heart, building a wall of this size wasn't something possible to be done in less than 3 to 5 years, and first of all he did not even have enough stone masons for cutting and grinding so many stones? Even more, Border Town was only a mining town, most of the people living here were only common people. When he hadn't even digested this news, Roland's next sentence also shocked him incomparably. As for the ore sales, starting next year, I will be willing to reduce the price by half, sir, but we will not only sell to Longsong Stronghold, because you don't really need that much ore. I think compared to the low profits of ore, you would prefer some more metal products, such as spades, shovels, and the like. Here again he paused, waiting until it seemed like Petrov understood the meaning of his words, as for rough gems, we will sell them in the form of an auction, the businessman with the highest bid will be able to buy them. I would prefer to polish the stones myself, but unfortunately in the current border town there is no one with such an ability. But you're saying you have the ability to build the wall in this few months. Petrov's heart nearly burst from anger, and what does he mean, that Longsong stronghold doesn't require so much ore? It's a mere output of 1,000 gold royals, even if the production would be increased, Longsong Stronghold could double it. 2,000 gold royals cannot be handled by Longsong Stronghold? That is a bit too arrogant. He forced back the grievances of his heart, and tried to maintain a composed look, everything you said I have remembered, your highness. I will immediately go back and negotiate with the six families. But, the city walls you mentioned before. I first want to have a look. Of course, Roland smiled, but do not be into too much of a rush, let us first enjoy and finish these kingly flavored pastries. After that, it wouldn't be too late to start, right Mr. Ambassador? Chapter 19, Lessons After entering winter, the first rain finally fell. The rain had already lasted for two days without stopping. Roland leaned over his desk and looked out of the window. The rain was blown upwards by the wind, hitting against the glass again and again, creating bursts of ripples. Under the refraction of the ripples, the image of the small town became distorted. The houses and the streets were bent in deformation, without any regular form. Due to the lack of any effective drainage measures, the stone roads were interlocked with streams of flowing water, from afar, it resembled many brooks of clear and crystalline water. The distant mountains and forests were obscured by mist, and were faintly discernible, just like the border to the human world. If such a landscape was placed into modern times, it would certainly be a tourist attraction, but what Roland wanted to see was a jungle made of concrete and steel. Because of the rain, the city wall construction also had to stop. This led his feeling of success, which he got on the day before yesterday when he discouraged the stronghold messenger, fade away. You just said that the air around us is made up of many different kinds of gases, is that true? Anna's clear voice had interrupted Roland's thoughts, and when he looked towards her, Anna blinked her beautiful blue eyes questionably. Ahem, Miss Anna, you should address his highness with honorifics, warned Carter from the side. Don't be so particular about it, Roland turned around, she is now my student. During the rain, 
he had called for Carter and the two witches to attend their own class, yes, he had decided to open a course of natural science. He was inspired by stonemason Carl's college. If even a mason can open a school, then could a mechanical engineer open one too? Why did discrimination exist? Wasn't it because of ignorance? Universal education was at any age the most effective measure to promote the development of civilization. He originally also wanted to call the assistant minister, but since he was busy with other government tasks, he declined. Roland didn't know why, but since the beginning of winter Roland felt that Barav seemed to be filled with special enthusiasm, even almost supervising border town all alone. When hearing of the possibility to learn new knowledge, Anna's eyes immediately sparkled with interest. Nana, who didn't need to treat wounded animals during the lessons, also became very happy. Carter, who was idle at the moment, attended the class to see what new nonsense the prince had thought of. But not long after the class had begun, the knight's eyes became lax. Nana's look also became distant, staring only at the two words natural science in a daze. Although it seemed that Anna could not completely understand it, she still tried hard to remember everything. Roland had to pause his lecture for a moment to let the three people digest his teaching. Hearing Anna's question, he smiled and nodded, of course, even though they look alike. Your Highness, I do not understand, since every gas looks the same, how can you know that there are different gases? Carter expressed his doubts. I can even prove it to you. Roland knew that even with these easy to understand words, most of the people would be confused by the theories. He decided to use a simple experiment to arouse everyone's interest. A candle, a glass, a basin, a bowl of lime water, these were the things he had prepared in advance. Although at this time they had only pale brown glass, far less transparent than the glass of his former time, it was still transparent enough to be used. After all, this simple test didn't need someone to observe the changing process. Roland had done this test before once, the test results showed that although there was magic in this world, the rules of nature were still the same as on Earth. He asked Anna to light the candles, and then he put it in the basin. When something is burning, it needs to consume gas. This gas is also closely linked with every living organism, if we stop breathing, we will be like this candle. Watch. Roland put the glass on the candle, and after the flame shook two times, it soon went out. It exhausts the air, sir, this is not surprising the chief knight spoke in a disapproving way, of course we will die without air. For example, if we fall into water. Nana also nodded. So, do you think that there in the glass is nothing at all? Roland asked. Then he poured the lime water into the basin, the lime water soon flooded into the glass, but it finally stopped when only half was filled. This experiment was so classic that most elementary school teachers liked to use it as an experiment to increase the interest of the children in natural science. Roland could still remember the shock he felt when his own teacher had demonstrated it. From then on he embarked on the road of science and engineering, with no way to return. He gently lifted a corner of the glass, and after a few moments bubbles of air could be seen rising out of the lime water. Then, the clear lime water appeared to be a little bit cloudy, and a little white cloud slowly spread within the glass. If there was nothing in the glass, we wouldn't have seen the changes in the lime water and the air bubbles. This shows that the air contains at least two different kinds of gases. In fact, burning a candle consumes only a part of the air, while the other part is unable to burn. Though it is colorless and odorless, like the former gas, its nature is the complete opposite. Well, that seems to be the case, Carter thought for a long time to figure out the relationship between the two, but to know this, what is the use of it? If you can get the former gas, you can let the flame burn longer, and when you obtain the other gas, you can quickly extinguish the flames. Anna suddenly said. She was simply a genius, Roland praised her in his heart. Even though there was a small fallacy, when hearing of the different properties of the gases, she could immediately think of several uses. This idea was definitely genius level. Roland knew that she did not receive any modern education, but even without it, she could quickly think of this point, showing her extraordinary logic ability, at least she was far better than this chief knight. Right, it is possible to say that since humans learned to use fire, they were separated from the animals, even though obtaining fire was just a coincidence. Perhaps the lightning hit the trees and lit them, perhaps a rock hit another rock and released a spark. But if no one had noticed it, no one could have tried using it. We would still be the same as the animals. 
Roland guided them patiently and systematically in the direction he wanted. The goal of this experiment was to show you that curiosity and thinking were the driving forces of human progress. There are many of similar potential forces in nature, only waiting for us to discover and use them. After his speech, Carter still had a doubtful look. Nana was one of those types where it was unknown if they were asleep or awake, and she only looked at Roland with open, unfocused eyes. Only Anna bowed her head, as if she was thinking about something. Well, Roland sighed, indeed, teaching too far ahead of the ideas that they understand will not bring enlightenment, it will only make people feel perplexed. The height of their knowledge determined that they couldn't understand the powerful force of nature unless it was physically in front of them. Then they would understand how amazing the nature of the hidden forces in the world were. At this moment, the kettle hanging from the mantle gave off a clanging sound, it was the sound of a steam pinging against the lid. Ah, the water is boiling. Carter walked over to remove the kettle with a fork, and soon the sound stopped. He took a piece of cloth and wrapped it around the handle, then filled everyone's cups with water. For example, when Roland reached out with his hand to hold the cup, he could feel the temperature of the cup wall. From the first day of using fire, the principle of boiling water was known. Boiling water, hundreds of thousands of people had witnessed this and used it but no one thought that the gently curling and rising water vapor could also contain such a tremendous amount of energy. In a few hundred years, this would become the driving force behind humankind's development. In a very short period of time it would change the history of mankind. Although the principle was simple, the problem was not the limited technology. No, the problem was that the first choice for most people was to farm. But Roland was different from them, he thought, this world also had witches. Using magic to fight in a battle? That was only the way of barbarians, with magic someone could create, it could replace some of the key technologies to hasten the process of human development. This was the correct way to use magic. They talked until the sun went down, and after they had eaten dinner together, Roland went to his bedroom. There was no nightlife to speak of in this day and age, people didn't even have a word for it, and everyone went to sleep early. He also considered using his right as the prince to recruit a maid to do the sport, but in the end he couldn't because he was too thin-skinned to speak out. Just as he had lit the candle in his room, he could hear behind himself the sound of applause, then someone spoke to Roland, it was a spectacular lecture, I did not expect that His Royal Highness the Fourth Prince was actually a learned man. It was the voice of an unknown woman. Instantly Roland could feel cold sweat, only God knew how a stranger could get into his room without his knowledge, if not an assassin what could she be? He immediately ran towards the door, even before he had the time to put his hand on the doorknob, he could feel a cold wind blow near his ear. He discovered that a silver dagger was firmly inserted into the door, the distance from the dagger to his cheek was only one finger wide. Chapter 20, Nightingale Please don't be impulsive, your highness, I don't mean to hurt you, I just came here to talk with you. Heck, was this a way to tell people you want to talk with them? Roland swallowed his fear and slowly turned around. Under the threat of a dagger, he could only give way to the pressure and do what the other side wanted. In the light of the dim candlelight, Roland could see the other, she was sitting on his bed, her body hidden under a robe and her head covered with a hood, so he could not see her real appearance. Her shadow which was thrown by the candlelight occupied more than half of the wall behind her. Who are you? I do not have a name, but my sisters call me Nightingale. She stood up and straightened out her robe, then she squatted down on one knee, and unexpectedly gave a standard noble bow. First of all, I'm here to express my gratitude to you Roland Wimbledon, your highness. Show your gratitude? Roland noticed that some lines of her gown, due to the firelight, gave off a unique flash, they formed a pattern of three parallel triangles with an eye in the middle triangle, it seemed he had already seen it. The pattern on top of the coin. It is the eye of the holy mountain, which is the insignia of the Witch Cooperation Association. In his mind, Barev's words appeared once again, you're, a witch. Ha ha ha, she issued a series of light laughter, your highness is really knowledgeable. Hearing the other side reveal their identity, Roland breathed a sigh of relief, she was not an assassin sent by his brothers and sisters, why has a witch like you come to this remote town in the northern mountain area? I do not know where you heard the news from, but your ability to arrive is too slow, if I really wanted to hang her, she would have been dead long ago, I know, and if you had really done it, I would never talk with you, Nightingale sat back on his bed, 
the Witch Cooperation Association does not like to intervene in world affairs, especially with things related to the kingship. Honestly, for a witch to kill a prince, it would not be such hard work, but I want to honor the Witch Cooperation Association. However, if you leave a bad second impression I can still kill you. This was a hanging threat. Roland tried to ease the mood, the witch, she is alive and well. I know that, and in addition to her, there is another little girl she nodded, I came to this place a week ago, but I did not show myself to you. But I have seen everything you have done. Although I do not quite understand why you are not showing the usual malice against witches, no matter what, on behalf of the Witch Cooperation Association I have to thank you. Since a week ago, Roland rubbed his forehead, but also everything he had done was seen by her. This implied that she was always following him, but he and his guards were completely unaware of her. Well stop, saying that you wanted to talk to with me wasn't only for saying thank you, right? Are you already tired of talking with me? Asked Nightingale while taking off her hood, see, I do not look that awful, I will not scare you away, your highness. She was far more than not that awful, you could simply only call her beautiful. As her hood fell, her golden hair instantly cascaded down like a waterfall, the candlelight reflected by her hair made him feel dizzy, with her aquiline nose and her sparkling eyes, instead of Anna's and Nana's slightly childlike look, her features revealed a more mature charm. In this dim light, he could not take a close look, but her well-proportioned facial features were sufficient proof of her beauty. Step by step Roland slowly went over to her, and in the end they were sitting on the bed side by side. Not because he was attracted to her, that would be even dangerous, no, he just simply felt that the other side had no malicious intent. Now you can talk. Sure enough, you're not afraid of me. Nightingale's voice sounded a little happy, you and I have already seen those people who react differently. They hate us because they are afraid of us. I can see the fear in their eyes but in you. She couldn't help herself, she had to reach out and gently stroke his cheek. Roland, I only see curiosity. Roland embarrassedly coughed twice, and then moved his head away from her hand. Hey, don't change the atmosphere so much, just a moment ago you were still an assassin, how can you so suddenly completely change your style? Fortunately, the other quickly restrained her emotions, I came here to tell you that I want to take Anna and Nana with me. No, Roland became frightened, and impulsively responded. Then he was worried that if he refused her altogether, she would be annoyed, so he added, they have a very good life here, no one can hurt them. Besides, where do you want to take them? There is no other place safer than here. I will take them to the Witch Cooperation Association. After all, their home is there, despite Roland's denial Nightingale didn't got angry, instead she still continued to talk with him in a calm tone. The other members of the Witch Cooperation Association are their companions, and there will be no discrimination or persecution, and they, no longer need to disguise themselves. You and the Witch Cooperation Association don't have a fixed home? A month ago, my guards discovered your hiding camp in the forest. They found footprints leading to the north. But in the north, there are only the endless mountains. You're right, the Witch Cooperation Association is hiding somewhere in the mountains, for us witches it is absolutely safe there. Like a wild man living in the mountains during the winter, in the end where would you be safe? Do you have clean water? Do you have enough food? Is there a warm shelter? And the months of the demons is coming, the entire northwest will become a dangerous place, in the end what? Here Roland suddenly paused, what was is it again, what had Barav said? Only at the holy mountain can a witch obtain real peace. The purpose of the Witch Cooperation Association is to find the holy mountain together. To hell with it, don't do that. Are you going into the impassable mountain range in search of the holy mountain? I am afraid that I can't give you an answer, Nightingale smiled, but her look clearly told Roland that he had guessed correctly. If so, I will never agree. Roland flatly overruled their plan, it is only two months until the entire outside world is full of demonic beasts, even when you can avoid the humans in the mountains, you cannot hide yourself from the demonic beasts. How about this idea, instead of looking for the holy mountain during the winter, you all come to border town to get through the winter, and when winter has ended you all can try to find holy mountain again. This time it was Nightingale's turn to be stunned, the witch cooperation association should be moved here? You, really are an interesting person, for a moment she thought over it, but in the end, she still shook her head, your highness, even if you are not afraid of us witches, you can't guarantee it for your people. 
I'm afraid once we are exposed to the eyes of everyone, the church's minions will soon come to knock on your door. As long as the witches can help us smoothly get through the months of the demons, they will realize that the witches are not the evil ones. Just before Roland could open his mouth to speak, he was stopped by Nightingale, in addition, there is another reason why I want to take the girls away, Anna will soon turn into an adult. Adulthood. Yes, it seemed that she could see the doubt in Roland's mind, so Nightingale calmly explained, adulthood is the first hurdle all witches need to cross, the later they cross this hurdle, the harder it becomes to bear. Generally, people usually turn into witches at a younger age than Anna. Your Highness, do you know why we can be regarded as the devil incarnate? Chapter 21, What Do You Actually Desire? When Nightingale finished, the room was silent again, only the occasional crackling of the burning candles were heard. Roland had a serious look on his face, and he finally had a general understanding of the witches. Most witches had their awakening during the months of the demons. That was, according to legend, when the door to hell was open. Generally speaking, adulthood was the dividing line for a witch, after the age of 18 any woman who hadn't awoken would probably never become a witch, but the women who awoke before they were 18 had to bear a pain, like some spirit was devouring their bodies, every year on the day of their awakening. This unimaginable pain caused Nightingale's voice to clearly tremble when she came to this part of her explanation. According to her personal experience, it was just like something trying to break out of her body. In every blood vessel, muscle, and tendon, an unbearable pain would arise, and blood would seep out of the skin and one's eyes would protrude out of their sockets. If you could survive all this, your body would need four to five days to recover, but if you couldn't survive it, you would not only die from miserable torture, but moreover your moment of death would be a spectacle too horrible to endure. Nightingale had witnessed the death of several companions, their bodies would lose the ability to support themselves, and they would change into round and bulging meatballs. Blood mixed with other body fluids and internal organs would spray out of every possible hole, and the air around the body would turn into black fog. When finally everything possible was violently ejected, only a layer of black, burned epidermis would be left on the ground. This was the reason why witches were regarded as the devil's incarnate. Upon the sight of this scene, ordinary people would naturally be terrified, so who would care about the real cause of their death? In addition, the church is adding fuel to the fire, claiming that the witches were possessed by evil spirits, so over time, the witches became evil incarnations. Regardless of how outsiders viewed them, this kind of torture was real, witches were generally short-lived because of this. Every year it would become harder to endure, so many witches would choose to end their own lives. When a witch became 18 and turned into an adult, the pain of the devouring evil spirits was known as the most difficult checkpoint to cross. In fact, the magic the witches obtained before the checkpoint was not complete. Only in adulthood would this power become stable. After the stability of their magic, there was a substantial increase in their power, and there was even a possibility of developing new branches of magic. Unfortunately, the stability process was very painful, the pain of feeling their own body be devoured surpassed the limit what ordinary people could bear, and many witches would die on the day of their adulthood. Roland, after listening to this explanation was silent for a long time, he only whispered, in ancient books it is recorded that witches at the holy mountain get eternal peace, without having to suffer the demon's torture, is this really true? No one knows this, because the holy mountain has only appeared in legends. But if we take them to the camp of the Witches Cooperation Association, their chances of survival will be much greater. If the witches didn't need to hide ourselves, if we could live freely, then the devouring pain of the evil spirits would be much weaker compared to the past. For a moment Roland was terribly upset, his plan would not work without Anna's and Nana's help, but because of his plan they would need to bear an enormous risk. He really couldn't help it. In the end he weakly said, Anna is downstairs, I'll ask her to come over. If she is willing to, you can take her and leave. As for Nana, I will have to see her tomorrow. Thank you for your understanding, I really had the right impression of you, Nightingale stood up to express her gratitude. At this time Anna had yet to fall asleep, so when Roland went to get her, she was sitting properly at the table copying something. She looked surprised to see Roland. When she heard she had to go to the prince's room, Anna did not ask any questions and obediently followed him to his room. When she entered the room to find that there was a person there, the young girl was truly frightened. Roland took her hand and briefly introduced them to each other, and the three encircled a round table and sat down. 
Then Nightingale repeated the words they had said before, in the camp, and there are a lot of people like you, they are your partners. This should roughly summarize your case, Miss Anna, though you and I have signed an employment contract, in the case of such a potentially life-threatening situation, I have to respect your opinion. In case you agree dash. I won't go, Roland blanked out, what did you say dash? I said I won't go, said Anna at lightning speed to interrupt Roland's sentence, I want to stay here. Anna, I'm not lying to you. Nightingale frowned, I can feel your magic increasing in your body, it's getting close to maturity. Two months after the beginning of the months of the demons will be your day of adulthood, if we get you to the camp before then, it will be much safer. Anna didn't pay any attention to what Nightingale said. Instead, she turned her head and looked at Roland. Your Highness, do you remember when you asked me if I would like to go back to Carl's college with Nana and the other children to learn together? Roland nodded. I did not answer, but afterwards you spoke about living like a normal person, but I do not care about that said Anna with her smooth and natural voice, I just want to stay at your highness side, nothing more. Roland had thought that he understood Anna's personality before, but now he realized that he really did not understand her. Looking in her eyes, he couldn't read any emotions. There was no dependence, nor did she adore him, he couldn't see anything, he only could see tranquility all the way to the end. He remembered the scene when they met for the first time. At that time, she also had her calm expression. The difference now was that in this moment her face was full of life, just like a budding flower. She still didn't fear death, but right now she wasn't waiting for her execution like last time. The devouring by evil spirits will not kill me, said Anna with confidence, I'll beat it. Nightingale closed her eyes and took a deep breath, well, that's enough, understand. Will you leave alone, just like that? Roland asked. No, I have a good life here she drew her hood over her head and stood up, anyway, before the end of this month the demon camp will not move. Why? Roland had a surprise, did she also want to monitor them throughout the winter? I think people who have not experienced the process of adulthood can't understand how dangerous it is. I myself was on the edge of death again and again, I also witnessed the death of my companions, when that day comes, I may be able to help her. If. Nightingale shrugged her shoulders, if she cannot make it, I also have experience in handling the funeral. She went to the door, and retrieved her own dagger, then she turned to Roland and Kurt sighed once again, in that way, I have to say goodbye. And then her body gradually disappeared into the darkness, like mist, she didn't leave the slightest trace. Was this Nightingale's ability? Roland looked pensive, there was no sound or trace of her that he was simply a natural assassin. And from the first hand view he got of her dagger throwing technique, he concluded that she definitely had received training in it. Was the Witch Cooperation Association not only gathering witches, but also developing their own force? Or had Nightingale already mastered these skills before she entered the Witch Cooperation Association? Roland could not find any useful information from the relevant information of their organization and the memories of the former Roland, but he had the premonition that he would absolutely meet this organization again, as long as he stuck to his path of recruiting witches. It's already late, you should quickly go back to sleep, Roland patted the girl's head. It was somewhat unexpected for him when Anna brushed his hand away and left the room without saying a word. When the door was closed, and the lights were cut off, she was enveloped by her shadow. She gently leaned herself against the door, and her lake-like eyes were no longer calm. Anna raised her arms to hide her face, and whispered with a barely audible voice. Fool. Chapter 22, Declaration. The next day the rain finally stopped, and border town became lively once again. Many villagers gathered on the square, talking while awaiting the fourth prince's speech. The day before, Roland had posted a notice regarding this presentation on the bulletin board. Anyone who came to the square and listened to his speech would receive a bowl of wheat porridge and half a loaf of bread. For the townspeople, this was equivalent to a free lunch, thus there were much more people here to watch than the time when the witch was hanged. When it was close to noon, Roland ascended onto a previously prepared stage. Faced with the dense mass of people before him, he would be lying if he said he wasn't nervous. Most of the time in his former life he only dealt with computer monitors, even if he attended a meeting he was always sitting in the audience to applaud, so facing such a kind of battle was a first. But he had to step on stage, if he wanted most of the people to stay in border town, they would need a greater defense, and without motivation they would all leave. Roland waved with his arm, and everyone quieted down. 
He had practiced this scene many times, but when he stepped on the stage, his mouth was still a little dry. People of my territory, good afternoon. I'm the fourth prince of Grey Castle, Roland Wimbledon. At this moment we gather together, because there is an important message I have to tell you. Four days ago the ambassador of Longsong Stronghold arrived, his mission was to receive the mind ore. We all know that a month ago, we suffered from a disastrous accident, the collapse of the mine in the northern mountain slope. Even today, the mining area isn't fully restored so we can't produce as much as we used to. The result of the accident was that we only output the equivalent of two months in the last quarter. I explained the situation to the messenger, since I hoped he would loan us three months worth of food, and we would pay the missing ore at the end of winter, but he refused. There was no room for negotiation, he refused to set aside any more food, just like they did two years ago. The crowd burst in alarm, clearly everyone's suffering from two years ago was still remembered. This time it will be even worse. The Longsong Stronghold Astrologer told me that this time the months of the demons will be even longer, most likely lasting more than four months. That means, this time all of us will face two months of a food gap. Two years ago, we lost 20% of the population. Someone lost a brother, someone lost a child, but this time, how much will we lose? No, your highness, you have to save us. Someone shouted from underneath, then more people shouted, your highness, I beg you to help us. It seemed that planting some people in the crowd, who would speak in his interest was the right choice. Roland raised his hand again, suppressing the voices of the people, of course, I will not leave my entrusted people, I will never do that. You may not know, but Longsong Stronghold annually ships wheat and bread to us, and they carried away the ore we mine, but it isn't equivalent to the normal market price. According to the market price, two months of ore should be enough for half a year of food, I have sold the ore to Willow Town, their cargo ship full of food will soon arrive at Border Town. In addition to bread, there will be cheese, honey, and meat. For a whole winter, everyone can eat one's fill. The square burst into cheers. However, this is equivalent to breaking off relations with Longsong Stronghold, so they will not accept any person during the winter. As a result, this winter, we will all have to stay in Border Town. Most people have been at the west border of our town, there we are currently establishing a strong wall. I know many people are anxious of the invasion from the demonic beasts, but we can block them. I want to tell you, that the demonic beasts are not much more powerful than normal forest beasts. Although they have rough skin and thick meat, they cannot climb walls and they also cannot eat stones. They have a thick skin but they are just a group of easy to aim at targets. Tell me, my beloved people, are you willing to hide in Longsong stronghold? living in shacks and starving to a useless death? Or under my leadership will you protect your loved ones and children, guarding border town until the last minute? I promise, everyone who stays until the end of the months of the demons and protects the other townspeople on the city wall will get a reward of 25 silver royals. If someone sacrifices himself while defending the town, his family will receive a compensation of 5 gold royals? Your Highness, we want to fight with you. Under the guidance of his own people placed in the crowd, more and more people swore to wage war. Seeing the atmosphere surge up, Roland timely ordered to issue lunch. He did not expect that everyone would stay in border town. As long as half of the people were willing to stay, he would have a chance to obstruct the demonic beasts from moving forward. While Petrov was bringing back the message to the six noble families only to be met with laughter, he naturally did not know that the fourth prince was inciting the townspeople. You said that the incompetent prince actually wants to throw off the demonic beasts alone? Daring to build walls before winter, I don't know, should I praise him for his courage or mock him for overestimating himself? His royal highness lack of courage is a known fact, when did the fourth prince find his guts? He is just stupid, and nothing more. Yes, he did not even have a stonemason, he is only leaning on piling up unpolished stones and pasting wet mud between it. I'm afraid this piled up stone wall will collapse immediately. Anyway, it's a good thing. If he flees to Longsong stronghold, we will be at the mercy of nature. But if he dies in the border town, we can soon end this farce. After he had meditated about the problem, the duke suddenly spoke, Petrov, what do you think? Petrov was startled, he did not think that the duke of Longsong stronghold would ask for his opinion, well, I originally wanted to maintain a monopoly. As long as we could get the ore for 30% below the market price, it would still be a deal worthy for us, but, his mind calculated some ideas, 
but His Highness does not intend to sell all the ore to Longsong Stronghold. He is even selling the ore for a 50% lower than the market price, which means he has plans to make a substantial increase in the ore production next year. As long as they are able to increase the production to the double of the former years, we may earn more than ever before. But he also intends to sell their own production of iron. Iron production is hot in demand, and resale would also be very easy. But these are not the important points. Oh, what is important? If he can hold border town, it would also be very good news for us. We wouldn't have to focus on dealing with demonic beasts every year, which can save us a huge amount of expenditure. A second advantage would be that the vast amount land between the stronghold and the border town will be open for all of us. Whether it be cultivating the land or using it to settle new people, both choices would be good. This could greatly ease the current status of the overcrowded stronghold population. Petrov recited his ideas one by one, and the fourth prince will not always stay in border town. The fight for the throne will only last for five years, after five years we would get a more prosperous border town, and then we could include border town into the stronghold. Then the territory of the stronghold would become the third largest territory of the whole kingdom. So my advice is, he glanced at the duke, and said carefully, the stronghold should send staff to help his highness, and we should collaborate in the defense of border town. That's right, said the duke, but those are the thoughts of a merchant, only interested in gains and losses. When he came to this point, he straightened his body, his eyes slowly swept to each of the participants and his tone became awe-inspiring, however, I didn't get my status of today by weighing all the benefits with the losses. Why do I have to do business with a person who is out of my control? Some rules must be obeyed, and if they are broken the trespasser must be punished. Whether border town is prosperous or broken is not important, what is important is that no one should ever think about taking the control away from me, even if he is a prince, he is no exception. Chapter 23, New Source of Power Come on, try to join these two iron plates together, Roland said. Anna's finger pressed on the iron seams. A flame was ejected from her finger, melting the interface at a speed visible to the eyes. Reduce the firepower and start again with the reverse side. Anna nodded her head and did it once more. The two iron plates were firmly welded together at a 90-degree angle. Roland carefully examined the interface and found that the effect was just as he had imagined, a perfect weld without any flaws. With a little polishing, the fluid traces of molten iron could rub off. There was no difference with a modern welding technique. Very good, Miss Anna, simply excellent. Roland excitedly exclaimed, next. We should also weld these two iron panels together. What is it? An iron, bucket. No, it is a cylinder, corrected Roland. Cylinder, repeated Anna, puzzled. Yes, the cylinder can be filled with air, Roland pointed to another square piece of iron. Do you see the small hole above it? The air can enter the cylinder through that small hole, and push the piston. Well, and since the piston diameter is slightly smaller than the cylinder's diameter, it can move freely inside. Even the genius Anna, in front of so many unknown words, had question marks above her head, these, cylinder, piston, and so on, what do they do? They are needed for the purpose of manufacturing a machine that can move automatically. The steam engine brought the first industrial revolution, it was the driving force behind human development, completely replacing humans and animals in the workforce. It was a schematic diagram that each mechanic engineer was familiar with, to describe it in simple words, it was a larger version of a kettle. After boiling the water, the produced steam would be induced into the cylinder. There, it would push a piston that is connected to a pole. Like this, thermal energy was turned into mechanical energy. The principle was very simple, but it did not mean that it was easy to manufacture. Its difficulty laid in the sealing of the cylinder and piston, as well as the production of the gas pipeline. Without proper metal processing skills and only relying on manual forging, manufacturing a usable cylinder would only be a dream. However, with the help of Anna's ability, he could make up for the lack of their manufacturing skills. After much advanced planning, Roland came up with a design using four iron plates of the same size, like this, so the smithy could easily grind it. Then the iron plates would be welded together at a 90-degree angle by Anna. Like this, it was possible to get a highly stiff square cylinder. With the help of Anna, he didn't need to use the traditional production process. They created first a tubular boring machine, and then post-processed it to create a circular cylinder. The other big parts, too, 
could be divided into small pieces and then welded together. In this way, it was even possible to produce them in a small workshop. In this way, they were able to produce all of the components required for the steam engine. In fact, prior to the invention of welding, people could only rely on connecting small pieces by bolting or riveting. Since the internal cylinder must be smooth, normal connection methods obviously couldn't do this. The only problem was the gas pipeline. Its production process was nothing special, it needed to be heated up until it was red, and then the groove could be hammered into the right shape. This was also the method to produce a front-loading flintlock gun barrel. Later the barrel just needed straightening and counterbeard rifling etc., nothing that was too complicated. The problem was that it was impossible for Roland to call the blacksmith into the castle's back garden, since it was still not known that Anna hadn't been executed. Blacksmithing was not one of their strengths, but in a desperate attempt, they had to let the chief knight do it, under Roland's own command. After waiting for three days, Roland finally had the first steam engine ever standing in his back garden. This is the powerful machine you were talking about. Carter frowned while looking at the strange machine, but he had affirmed firsthand that this machine had nothing to do with magic. Each of the iron plates were personally molded by himself, and to him, it only looked like a sealed furnace. It was impossible for the devil to have any interest in it. But how could it move a pile of lump iron upwards? It looked very clumsy and had no feet, was it possible that it could fly? But in Roland's eyes, the seemingly simple machine exuded the beauty of the modern industry. Standing on the shoulders of giants, he naturally did not need to invent the Newcomen steam engine or the Watt steam engine, instead he built an improved steam engine. His first prototype was already a high-pressure steam engine with a dual connecting rod and a slide valve. To make it better than most of the original steam engines, the key laid in some of newer innovative ideas. Soon you will understand it. Roland poured a bucket of water into the steam room and told Anna to ignite the firewood. Ten minutes later, the water was at a rolling boil. Soon, a creaking sound could be heard from the cylinder. Roland knew it was the sound of the thermal expansion of the cylinder. The thin iron piston's expansion was far greater than the cylinder's and it would eventually press firmly against the cylinder wall. Isn't this a water boiler? I did not think it would really be a furnace, Carter muttered. When the cylinder was full of steam, an excited scene appeared. The piston rod began to push outwards, and when the motion was at its apex, another rod would pull the slide valves, allowing the steam to push the piston inwards again. The wheel connected to the two poles would rotate very quickly through this motion, and with increased power, the speed very quickly reached its peak. The machine made an ear-piercing humming sound, and white gas was ejected, producing a kind of unstoppable and imposing aura. That's what you called, hidden forces in nature, asked Anna, dumbfounded. The chief knight's face was full of wonder, the great iron wheel that he needed to spend a good deal of strength to install, was now rotating like it was as light as a feather. Standing next to the wheel he could even feel a new breeze, this only showed the astounding power of the steam engine. In his heart, a trace of anxiety gradually arose. His Highness had said that it could replace the power of humans and animals, and it seemed he hadn't lied. When placed on a horse-drawn chariot, it would be very hard for ten knights to resist its brute force. Training a qualified knight needed fifteen years, but the manufacturing of such a machine only needed three days. If the blacksmith only worked part-time, it would still only need a week. It didn't require feeding and wasn't afraid of cold or hunger. It also wasn't afraid of arrows and swords. Just install a rem in front of it, and it could bring rampage on the battlefield. As a traditional knight, was his existence still necessary? In the evening, when Roland returned to the bedroom, Nightingale was once again waiting for him. This time, she did not wear her hood, and she was smiling and sitting at the table. Her hands fiddled with a few parchments, it seems that the outside rumors really cannot be believed. They say the fourth prince is ignorant and has a bad character, in fact, he shouldn't have any learning or skills. In fact, compared with a court great master he would not have time for civilities. This drawing on this paper, are these the plans for the steam stove? You call it, steam engine, right? Shoot, can't I even get a little privacy? Coming and going like you want, do you think this is your home? In his heart, Roland cursed her endlessly, but he still replied with a calm face, yes those are the plans, but without Anna's help, they would forever be drawings only. What can it do? A lot, it can help with ore transportation, drainage, metal fabrication, forging, everywhere where strength is required it can play a role. Then I will take it, 
With this words Nightingale took the parchment and placed it in her robe, the Witch Cooperation Association has witches with the power of fire too, hey. She shook her head to stop Roland's protest, of course, I'm not only taking your stuff, take a look at this first before complaining. She put a small amount of white stuff on the table. When Roland went over to the table, he found out that it was actually a roll of paper. He gently expands the roll, and swept through its content, this is. A secret letter delivered by pigeons, Nightingale explained to him in a happy tone, the recipient was your maid tire, Tisk. it looks like your harem isn't loyal. I have not touched her, Roland frowned. Tyre, he could remember that she seemed to follow him from a very early age, and the former fourth prince appeared to be interested in her, but unfortunately he failed to succeed in conquering her, he could only lightly harass her several times. Here in Border Town, to prevent the long wait for his own personal maid, she got the room next door to him. He did not expect that this was actually an arrangement made by one of his siblings. Although this letter was not signed, according to the content, he could judge that it was sent by one of his siblings. In the letter it revealed that the author was very unhappy with the last failure, but the plans for the riot in Longsong stronghold were not allowed to fail again. Well, in fact, the first plan must have succeeded, he thought, or else he would have never become Roland Wimbledon. It was unlikely that this letter was forged by Nightingale because only the people who were involved in this conspiracy could have been aware of the first assassination plan. And if Nightingale wanted to kill him, it wouldn't be a problem for her. How could you steal this from her? Your maid tire isn't stupid, her intention was to burn the letter after reading it. Unfortunately, she looked away when I was just behind her, she made an act of sweeping something, so, how do you want to handle this? Do you need my help to deal with her? Roland naturally understood what she meant by deal, so he hesitated for a moment, then he finally nodded, I have to trouble you. He did not have the confidence to do this kind of thing himself, if you can, ask her who the person in the dark is. As you wish, your highness, Nightingale smiled while giving a salute, well, this will be the reward for the drawing of the steam engine. Chapter 24, Development Plan On the next morning, when Roland woke up, he wasn't served by his maid tire. Instead, it was an elderly maid. When he stepped out of the bedroom, his chief knight Carter was already waiting for him. Your Highness, I have bad news to deliver, Carter spoke with a low voice, your maid tire died last night. What? Roland's eyelids jumped up, although he already knew the result before, in his heart, he still felt a little uncomfortable. After all, she died because of his orders. She fell from the balcony in her own room. We couldn't find any signs of fighting nor the guards saw any outsiders near the scene of the accident. So, it seems that she fell from the balcony by herself, it was an accident. The knight reported the results of his investigation, and at the same time, he searched for any weird fluctuations in Roland's eyes. Roland certainly knew what Carter was looking for. When they were in Grey Castle, it was known to everyone that the fourth prince wanted to take Tyre by force. In this day and age, it was an ordinary affair for a prince and a maid to have a relationship, this kind of matter was of least interest to others. After all, almost no nightlife existed, so there was nothing to do besides eating one's fill and doing the thing between man and woman. And not only with their own woman, the prince and the other upper nobility would exchange their women, sometimes they would even make an open party, so an affair between a prince and his maid was nothing more than a simple laugh. The former fourth prince was already known for being more moderate in this kind of matter, and later he was even replaced with Cheng Yang, who had never touched a woman after he became Roland, with the exception of Tyre, all the other maids could be described as shabby. In addition, after his crossing he directly had to face the months of the demons, so his mind was almost only filled with development plans, and he had no chance to enjoy the romantic life of a noble. That is really regretful, Roland put on a look of mourning, in the future the senior maid who served me this morning should take over Tyra's position. She is the new head maid. Carter nodded and left after saluting. When Roland stepped into his office, he once more saw that Nightingale sat on his mahogany, redwood, table. What are the results of your interrogation? Nothing. She directly killed herself when she saw me. Her frustration was clearly audible. She acted too fast, there wasn't even the slightest hesitation. You actually didn't make her fall. Roland walked around her and sat in the armchair. I tied her up, Nightingale placed her body closer to him, but who could have known that she had hidden poison in her teeth? So I had to fake an accidental fall. 
I thought you were experienced. So, do you think you did enough to get paid? Hey, don't talk like that. Though I couldn't get anything directly from her mouth, that doesn't mean I didn't get anything. While chuckling, Nightingale put a folded sheet of paper in front of Roland, I found this hidden in her room. Roland spread out the paper and saw that it was a letter. In the letter, Tyre referred to the recipient as sister, but the content was just plain gossip. However, he noted that the other person repeatedly referred to the sea, such as the scenery was beautiful to view, her favorite entertainment was staying on the end beach watching the sunset, and other things like this. Finally, Tyre asked when she could see her older sister again since she was missing her very much. When Roland thought of the territories his brothers and sisters governed, he was sure he knew who the conspirator was, it should be my older sister Garcia, right? That is probably the case, since your two brothers cannot see the sea. I guess, third princess Garcia Wimbledon took Tyre's sister hostage and hid her away. Judging from the decisive style of her suicide, it is unlikely to be a random arrangement. What I mean is, before she was placed as your maid, she had at least two to three years of ample training. Roland sighed softly. Indeed as expected of the fight for the throne, it would not end without bloodshed. Even if he didn't fight, it didn't mean that his siblings wouldn't drag him into it. To get the throne, his brothers and sisters would stop at nothing. He was afraid that something similar would happen again in the future. Ah, someone's coming to speak with you. You'll have to excuse me, your highness. Nightingale spoke in a teasing tone and blew hot air towards Roland, and then she suddenly disappeared in the blink of an eye. Although it wasn't the first time he saw her doing this, but seeing her vanish in broad daylight, left Roland feeling shocked. He hesitated for a moment, and then he stretched out a finger towards the empty table, halfway his finger was stopped by a very soft touch, your highness, you cannot do this, you will make Anna very sad. Well, it seemed like her ability was invisibility and not teleportation, thought Roland, otherwise it really would be too powerful. Soon a knock was heard from the door, your highness, it's me Barav. Roland withdrew his finger and hid any expression that was on his face, come in. When the assistant minister stepped into the office, he was holding a large bundle of files. Even before he had sat down, he began his government report of the last week. Roland also turned his thoughts back, listening attentively to Barav's report. After living for a month in this world, he found himself able to keep up with Barav's rhythm, unlike the beginning where he was confused and disoriented, feeling completely out of place. In general, the finance of Border Town had a certain degree of improvement. The main point for this was the selling of the ore and rough stones to Willow Town. As payment, they had received nearly 200 gold royals. After they had used the money to buy food and to pay off wages, there were still 90 gold royals remaining. Barav was in good mood, with money to spare, getting through this winter wouldn't be too difficult. But Roland was destined to not let him leave in good mood. I want to pick a group of townspeople to help fight against the demonic beasts and from now on they will only have to concentrate on training. Their instructor will be my chief knight, and I will give him special instructions on how to train them. You will need to make a list of equipment or gear. These people will need leather armor and pikes. They also need to have two sets of winter clothes, so they can change clothes. Your Highness, this, according to the convention, isn't a temporary recruitment only allowed as the final option. If you send them to the battlefield without further training, they will only be a chaotic mob. Do you think it's possible to scare off the demonic beasts with numbers only? After the order collapses, we will only have more trouble. Your Highness, do you really insist on staying in Border Town? Asked Barav hesitantly. If we cannot restrain the demonic beasts, of course, I will retreat. But I do not think that we cannot even deal with a few variations mutations of normal animals. According to your future plans, we will need a greater amount of money. Hearing that the other side was such a miser, Roland had to laugh these are necessary expenses, go and do it. In his own treasury were more than 300 gold royals which were mainly used to pay for the construction of walls. The required steam engine materials and components ordered from the blacksmith shop were also paid for from his own pockets. For the first steam engine, he had to spend almost 20 gold royals, and he would need at least three engines. The invention of the steam engine was a key component of the industrial revolution, this was true, but it didn't mean that the steam engine was equivalent to the industrial revolution. In history, the United Kingdom was looking for a possibility to replace the people and livestock involved in order to increase the productivity in mining operations. When Watt improved the steam engine, 
he immediately received a huge amount of orders. This new power was also spread to various industries in a very short period of time. At this point of time, there was no basis for the industrial revolution in a small border town. It could even be said that industry did not exist. So Roland did not expect to make a pot of gold by selling the steam engine, he just wanted to put this machine in the northern mining area to pull ore and gravel. And when the mining production was increased, he would expand the scale of use of the steam engines. It would be the equivalent of the promotion of the industrial development from top to bottom. Chapter 25, Militia. These are the people you selected, when Roland looked at the group of civilians dressed in shabby clothes, all his courage flew away immediately. Your Highness, these are the people who fulfilled your requirements, said Carter. He began to count them with his fingers, male, no criminal records, between 18 to 40 years of age, no disabilities. I carefully inspected all of them. Well, he knew he shouldn't have expected too much. After all, this world's productivity was much too low. Having enough to eat was already a difficult task, so wearing shabby clothes was just normal. As a prince he had ignored such things. Just leaving his castle he could see many people who only wore clothes that did not cover the whole body, begging for something to eat. In fact, in the capital of the Kingdom of Grey Castle there existed a job as a corpse carrier, the only thing they would do was to collect the people who starved to death and then burn their bodies every day. So what was the general fighting power in this world? Roland closed his eyes and reviewed his plan carefully again, ah, probably a little stronger than a high-level street fighter. Generally, when the lords decided to wage war, or more precisely fight, Roland thought naming their little fights as war would be overstating it, they would summon all the aristocracy placed under their jurisdiction in their territory. A lord would always split his territory into many smaller territories and select lower ranks of nobility to govern them, like a duke would select earls, the earls would select viscounts, and they again would select barons, and so on. These nobles usually had a group of knights and mercenaries as their personal army. They were the main force in combats, equipped with a complete suit of armor and sophisticated weapons. At the same time, they would recruit civilians and farmers who worked on their territory to help out during combat, in fact, they were used to deliver food supplies to the troops and when needed they would even fill up the holes in the front lines as cannon fodder. The most people who died on the battlefield were the people used as cannon fodder. Fighting between nobles would rarely result in someone's death, they generally would be caught and later exchanged for ransom. Roland did not expect help from the several other nobles in Border Town to fight against the demonic beasts. In fact, they had no relationship with Border Town. Most of the local barons were living in Longsong Stronghold. The stronghold was also under the jurisdiction of the regional aristocracy. An all-civilian force was in this day and age a very imaginative thing. After all, they were stupid and ignorant, failed to understand strategies, nor could they understand the commanding structure, and they also hadn't received professional combat training. How could they compare to a knight who was trained in the art of the sword from when he was 10 years old? Carter who stood near Roland whispered some advice to him, Your Highness, this project is not feasible. You look at them and tell me, which of them can hold and balance a sword. I'm afraid that when they encounter the demonic beasts, many of them will desert us, and at that time it will affect the stability of our defense. I suggest that we hire professional mercenaries from Willow Town or elsewhere to guard the walls and let these people do their normal chores. No, I'll use them, Roland refused Carter's suggestion. He didn't have a good opinion of the mercenaries who worked for money and did not love the land, and besides, he didn't form his army to only deal with the demonic beasts. Throughout history it was seen that only a force whose member came from their own civilities would be strong and full of vitality. Whether it was the feudal forces, the forces from the not very distant past or modern army troops, there were countless examples which verified this rule. Well, you have the final say, said Carter while shrugging with his shoulders. Then I will start to train them from tomorrow onwards? Although I don't know how useful that will be. With a sword? No, you will first take them all for long distance running. Roland suddenly thought of the fact that his chief knight never had experienced these kinds of training exercises. Without any better options he had to change his plan, try to find the hunter from last time and bring him to me. You both will be the first to look at how I will handle the training. Today's experience may be even more inconceivable than what happened in the last two decades combined. He actually saw His Highness, the fourth Prince Roland Wimbledon from close range. He passed directly by himself and even smiled to him. 
My God, was the prince drunk. Three days ago, when he heard the speech of the fourth prince on the square, he knew that this winter would be different from the past. This time, they would not go to Longsong stronghold, instead, they would spend the long winter here. The truth was that he didn't understand most of the reasons mentioned by the prince, but he supported from the bottom of his heart the result of this decision. His own brother died two years ago in the slums of Longsong stronghold after a whole month without any food supply. They could only rely on the hard-earned coppers he got from unloading goods at the docks. With them, he was able to buy some black bread and share it with his brother. But the winter was too cold. The wind would blow through the many holes in their slum shack. Without enough to eat and with no possibility to maintain their body temperature they couldn't survive. When his brother got sick, he fell into a coma and never woke up again. Here in border town, he at least had a house built out of soil brick. There was no fear of the falling temperature or the many days with snowfall. He also saw many ships filled with wheat docking at the pier, and then the wheat was moved in batches into the castle. Therefore, when he heard that the fourth prince was recruiting a militia force, he directly registered himself. Of course, he had to give up his job as a gravel producer. But the temptation was too big, after all, they would get a monthly salary of 10 silver royals. This was comparable to a skilled mud artisan. He was no longer a young boy, he was only waiting until the spring of next year to marry his future wife Cheryl, a tavern maid. Now he had no problem to save some money. As for the requirements and the future tasks of the militia shown on the notice, he did not pay any attention to them. Anyway, it was to carry the burden of protecting the civilians on behalf of the Lord. They had to patrol along the city wall and keep the beasts from climbing up the wall, and withstand the crazy attacks of the demonic beasts. He had to go through a very strict screening process. Alone, the sight of some knights was enough to make people feel afraid. Fortunately, he had a sturdy physique and got through the review, but many scrawny guys were carried away by the knights. In the end, only 100 men were recruited. But he had never expected that the person who would train them would be His Royal Highness the Prince himself. For their training, they were brought to a grass field west of Border Town. In the background the city wall was being built, and in front of them was an unceasingly and continuously extending forest. The prince ordered everyone to line up, and then he went to the site to rest. Just a few days ago they had heavy rain, so the ground was still damp and muddy. The water infiltrated his shoes along the seam at the soles, which made his whole body feel uncomfortable. The stance they were ordered to take was not a normal one. Their hands needed to be aligned vertically, attached to the sides of their thighs, while their backs were required to be perfectly straight. Only a quarter of an hour later they already felt terribly fatigued. This was even harder than breaking stone with a hammer, but he gritted his teeth and tried to hold on. After all, his royal highness had said before that those who moved would get no egg for lunch. God, it had been so long since he had eaten an egg. Apparently, all the people around him felt the same way. Although they staggered, most of them still endured. When the prince declared it was time to rest, he found out that his back was already drenched in sweat and the whole standing time wasn't even long, at most it was two quarters of an hour. Those who couldn't persevere till the final moment were annoyed. It seemed as if they could see the eggs rolling away from them. He just didn't understand. Why did they have to practice this strange stance? Only standing was enough to get several bags of food? If it wasn't for his royal highness training them, he would have already stood up and begun to argue noisily. Unexpectedly, after a short break, the second command his highness gave was even more eccentric. He asked all the people to continue standing in a line. This time, as long as all of them persevered till the end, they would all get another egg added for lunch. As long as there was a person who gave up, everyone would lose the opportunity to get an additional egg. He heard many people beside him swallowing their saliva. Hell, was this a popular game in the ranks of the nobility? Leading them all around with a carrot on a stick? Damn it, he was not a stupid donkey. But in the case that everyone was able to do it, wouldn't there be two eggs to eat? This was simply the devil's temptation. Wiping his overflowing saliva away, he decided to fight for the two eggs. Chapter 26, The Lessons Learned from History Your Highness, what is the meaning of this? Before Carter only thought that the prince merely acted arbitrarily and alone, but now he thought he had become whimsical. In the theory of how to train a soldier, the chief knight didn't think that there was a way more professional than their own. His family had a complete set of traditional training methods. From the age of 10 to 15 years, 
there would be only five years to develop the body and master all kinds of weapon used by a soldier. If they were trained for more than five years, then they would become a top soldier, known as a knight, of course, the trainees cannot have a civilian background. Looking at the group of morons in front of him, who only had thoughts of eating eggs on their mind, Carter became angry. After all, eggs are expensive. Roland spoke directly into his ear, take a good look and remember everything. This is the kind of training which should be performed in the next few days. Of course, some details will change. I will list them for you on a paper. In the age of cold weapons, were two or three months of training enough to train a group of good soldiers. Roland did not think about this question and neither did he need one of those Spartan warriors dressed in underpants who could rip apart wild animals with their bare hands. The individual combat strength of Roland's people may not be strong but they must be well disciplined and execute every order without fail. Most of the time the group's strength is more important than the individual strength. So, he needed them to quickly form a unit. To accomplish this task quickly and move over to military training for improving the current situation was the best choice. Out of his personal experience, he knew that one month would be enough to form a group of people from all over the country into a strong cohesive unit. Regardless of the process, the goal was clear. And when this group of people learned to follow orders, Roland could start to implement the next step of his plan. Vanner ultimately failed to get a second egg to eat. This time, they had to stay double the amount of time of the previous round until someone's legs went weak and he could no longer persevere. Just at this time, the fourth prince allowed everyone to get some rest and then he ordered his attendants to serve lunch. This successfully transferred the anger from the weakling to the anticipation of eating. At this point, Vanner started to suspect that his highness probably had never intended to let them get a second egg. The lunch was packed in four huge barrels, which were carried by carriages out of town. In addition to the food, the carriages also contained many bowls and spoons. Vanner licked his lips, ready to jump on the carriages. But he along with everyone else was stopped by the chief knight, who stood in front of them. His royal highness the prince ordered everyone to line up in four rows and to come forward one by one to pick up their cutlery. Whoever disturbed the order would be forced to step back to the end of the line and get their food last. The rows were very noisy as everyone squeezed in to get a good position. Vanner had very good luck, he stood in the forefront of the outermost row. Of course, some people expressed their intense resentment. So within the ranks, the sounds of people fighting with words and movements could be heard. Soon the knights and several guards rushed into the crowd picking out the rioters to be sent to the back of the line. Fool, thought Vanner when he saw the man at the forefront of the rioters. He recognized him. He was the best street fighter in the town, also known as Insane Fist. He usually relied on brute force to stir up trouble everywhere. Now, only barehanded against knights and guards armed with swords, he gave of a pitiful picture. Look at his poor appearance now, he felt that he had already grasped his highness's preference. That was to become a unit. Standing straight, side by side, the team had to form lines. Everyone had to line up to get something to eat, always keeping order, never stepping out. Vanner had previously heard from a knowledgeable businessman that some of the nobility had a strange hobby, and that was that everything had to be arranged in order, everything which stood out would be forced back into place. In Vanner's opinion, this kind of person was simply bored and had nothing better to do, so they would even deliberately find some trouble to occupy themselves. He had not expected that his royal highness would be such a person. When the lids of the barrels were opened, Vanner could smell the strong aroma of the food. When the aroma scattered, he almost lost himself to temptation. The crowd also became restless, but simultaneously a roar to be quiet came from the chief knight. Vanner thought that they probably had to line up again. Sure enough, the fourth prince had everyone get their cutlery first and then line up again to receive the food. Despite that, all of them had to swallow their saliva and hold back their stomachs which were growling. Given Insane Fist's example, they all stood quietly, waiting patiently for the food. The barrels were filled with hot wheat porridge. To Vanner's surprise, he found that the porridge even contained jerky, while it was only a small piece of jerky, even then it was still meat. After he got his share of the porridge, he also got his wish, his egg. Vanner almost wolfed down his food. It looked like he hadn't eaten for days, as he licked the bottom of his bowl again and again after finishing his food. He didn't even have the time to bite the egg, as he swallowed it whole, directly sending it into his stomach. Since he ate too fast and wasn't careful, his tongue developed blisters. 
After putting the empty bowl down, Vanner patted his belly and happily belched. He hadn't enjoyed such a delicious meal in a long time. And even more incredible was that he actually felt a sense of satiety. Eating wheat porridge with black bread, even if compared to heaven, it couldn't be better. If he could eat like this every day, even fighting in the front lines against the demonic beasts would be worth it, right? After dinner, they all got a long period of time to rest. During this time everyone was brought back within the city walls, walking all the way to the camp of the town's patrol. A burly man with the rank of a ranger came out and began to teach them how to set up tents. Vanner knew him, there was no one in town who did not know Iron Axe. His superb skill in archery left even the town's most experienced hunter thinking that it was at the acme of perfection. Wait a minute, since when did Iron Axe work for the fourth prince? It seemed that he had seen him staying at the side of the knights before. Vanner frowned. In the end, what was his royal highness planning? He was a former citizen of the Sand Nation. Do you really intend to appoint a man of the Sand Nation as captain? Carter was holding this same question, he does not belong to Grey Castle. He is not even a person from our continent. Witches also do not belong to Grey Castle, Roland disagreed, but they all belong to Border Town. Besides, don't you see what's happening? But, your highness, do not worry, Roland patted the knight's shoulder, in Border Town, we do not care about the origin of any person. As long as there is no violation of the law of the kingdom, they will all be my beloved subjects. You really don't have to worry. You can also pick two captains. Anyway, in the future, we will expand the number of teams, so it would not be bad to cultivate some promising talents now. Oh, that's right. I have already written down the training regulations. Compared to the people of the Sand Nation, I think you should be more concerned about this. Carter took the parchment from Roland's hands. Sweeping through its contents from the beginning to the end, he suddenly felt dizzy. The training content was simply unheard of, for example, in the afternoon everyone had to run laps around Border Town after eating lunch until the sun set. The regulations even emphasized that everyone had to do this and that they were allowed to help each other on the way. If they persevered without giving up until the end, they would all get an additional egg for dinner. Another example was when at night the wolf whistles were blown, everyone had to report immediately. With these kinds of training exercises, he was afraid that most of them would toss from one side to the other side during the night. If the first few exercises were already hard to understand, then the last one, left Carter feeling thoroughly confused. Every day after dinner, they all have to go to Mr. Carl's college to receive cultural training. Your Highness, what is the meaning of cultural training? Do they have to learn how to read and write? I would hope so, but the time is too short. Carl can only teach them a few simple words and numbers. This part, I will personally explain to Carl. You just need to send them over. But, why do you want to do this? Learning how to read and write will not be helpful for fighting the demonic beasts. Who said that? Roland had to yawn, a good unit must also be well educated. This is a lesson learned from history. Chapter 27 a friendly banter. Every day the weather was getting colder and colder, and every day Roland woke up later and later. As a member of the ruling class, he certainly had the right to lie longer in bed, until late morning. In particular every time he slept on his three velvet cushion blanket bed, he felt like he was falling into soft clouds dawdling in this kind of a feeling could help him to boost his mood. After Roland washed his face and rinsed his mouth he stepped into his office, where Nightingale had already been waiting for him for a long time. Well, here is your breakfast. I already ate half of it while it was still hot. But now, it's cold said Nightingale as she pouted and pointed toward the table on which less than half of the bread was left. Looking at this scene, it seemed as if she was the owner of this place and not Roland. Did no one teach you to be humble in the presence of a prince? Roland reached over to take the plates as he sat down at his desk, I still remember that in the beginning you took etiquette quite seriously. He sighed within his heart. He really had not thought that Nightingale would always be around him instead of accompanying Anna. It seemed as if she wasn't on a mission but taking a stroll in the sun instead. Before, she had always hid her figure. But now, as long as there were no outsiders around she would openly show herself in the office without even wearing her hood. Like this. She jumped off the table and gave a perfect noble bow, recently you've started to get up late. So, I thought eating your breakfast would help you solve this little problem, your highness she leaned herself towards Roland, anyway, you don't care, right? I can see that you do not like these tedious rituals. 
Her remark was spot on. Roland silently cursed her. Was there anything she didn't see? He sighed, take the breakfast with you. After you begin to eat something, you have to finish it. I'll get another one if I want to eat. As you say, your highness. She gently smiled and went to put the plate at her side. Roland rolled out a blank parchment and began to finish the compliment design he had drawn partway. If he wanted to hold border town, it wouldn't be that easy after having a tragic victory in their first fight, so he had to do something. On top of that, his new troops had never seen blood. So Roland was worried that once large losses occurred, his newly trained troops wouldn't be able to bring up the courage to stand on the walls. He needed the weapons of his era to gain an absolute advantage over the demonic beasts. Without a doubt, guns would help. In fact, this era had all the conditions for guns to appear. Alchemists often created a powder, which was called snow powder, and was used for court celebrations. But this snow powder had the wrong recipe to be used as gunpowder, it was slow burning and its explosion was more exaggerated than the damage it did. In the next 100 years, the prototype of guns, usable for war, will probably appear. Such firearms, because of their complicated operation, would require the collaboration of two people to shoot. Under normal circumstances they were only used as a single shot weapon, but in terms of rate of fire and power, they were still not comparable with those of a well-trained archer. Roland was certainly not interested in a repeat of history. With the help of the steam engine and the ability of the witches, he could create guns which had real value. 